Royals in Bleach, what we would consider royals are usually families or clans closely related to beings such as the Soul King. Residents of these clans are commonly regarded as beings either more skilled or more powerful than those who are not of similar status. So, what if Ichigo is not only from one of those clans, but starts his journey throughout the world of Bleach there? Well, that's what we'll be covering today on What If Ichigo Was a Royal, the movie. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, now we start this what if um, before Ichigo's born. Byakuya will be pretty much walking through the Rokongai, similar to how he was when he met um, <sighs> Hisana. So he will be walking through in the Rokongai District 79, or the Hanging Dog. Now he'll be walking through looking at the scene like the sky and the beautiful scene and he wouldn't be wearing any of his noble clothes since it'll re- he'll stick out like a sore thumb. So he would see um, this orange hair girl and her brother pretty much getting uh, harassed by some nobles and he can see from the symbols and the, uh, the clan hairpins that it was the son of Yushiro's like some of the lower ranks of the sonar so it isn't like the clan here or anything like that so byakuya's like shinigami instinct would kind of take control or, or t- you know kind of like a upright a, a rise i guess you can say and since he just didn't like seeing that in general so pretty much what he would do is um with unsheathed sword and he would kind of put it vertical to the air and he would do you know activate shikai scatter senbon sakura and his blade would start to inch away slowly and slowly and it would disappear into flower petals before he would control the flower petals with his uh, sword handle he would send all these flower petals they would kind of like go like left to right in like um kind of like um bending in a sense uh in a horizontal direction before it would just like go right through the the Sonayushu nobles and it was just like in the first you would see them next to you all you see is like the blood staining Senbon Sakura's uh, flower petals now right after this he would call Senbon Sakura back to his blade and he would sheathe his sword now when he would see he would see like the Sonayushu was basically killed um Asake's brother like in the middle like when he was activating his sheet guy and when he actually got there so he would help Masaki up and pretty much he would have taken or tried to save his brother or her brother, pardon me for the pronoun mistake. And he would try to uh, take his he would try to take his brother to basically squat four. So he can try to get healed, but it was already too late, so Unohana couldn't really do anything. So uh, pretty much this would like start a an events. Or Byakuya, Saki, you know, how that happen. And if you guys are wondering, how are there Quincy's in Soul Society? So basically, what would happen is that Quincy's, like some Quincy's, like some Kurosaki's and other clan uh, Quincy's, they kind of made like uh, an alliance with Soul Society, just kind of showing them that they weren't part of Yuwa, Yuwach, or Yuha. Yuha is like, um, uh, I guess you could say empire. So yeah, it, they kind of got to live in the edges of soul society not in the serite itself so basically byakia and masaki yeah you all know what's gonna happen so then pretty much what would happen is the same events would go place of everything but the rain but it's kind of be a little bit different so like ichigo's like mom would get like pretty much uh infected by white and pretty much what would happen is like you know Byakuya wouldn't have to give his Shinigami powers it was like for example <sighs> it wouldn't really have to give all of his Shinigami powers it was like it would only do it for a short amount of time uh since she was gonna like give birth to Ichigo and for some reason that would have solved the situation you know, Byakuya would have gotten his powers back 
So in the maybe nine month span, that whole um, process would take place and uh, Masaki would give birth and pretty much Ichigo would still have his Shinigami, his Hollow, his um, Quincy. And he would get full burning, but that's kind of a thing you have to train on your own, but he's not really human. I mean, technically Quincy's are human, but they're not at the same time. So it'll be a little difficult for that to happen, but technically full burn is when your mom is attacked by hollow when you're pregnant i mean when she's pregnant not <laughs> never mind but uh, sorry about the tangent i just went on so i'm basically explaining how ichigo is born and what will happen so due to the complications of the hollow uh masaki would die and you know just like in canon but in a different situation in a sense and byakuya would get his powers back so what would happen is Ichigo would then be raised for the next maybe 12 years, I guess. I don't know. I'll, I don't really know how to um, reverse that from Soul Society years to the normal years. But let's just say whatever how many years that is. But I'm saying just 12 years in general. And Byakuya would have gotten his powers back. And what would happen is Ichigo would be enrolled into the academy. Now, if you guys are wondering, what will his blade look like? What does his Suchi look like? Since he is tech, he is half Kuchiki and uh, half Kurosaki, technically, the Kurosaki is actually a clan, so th they consider that like full noble in a sense. So his katana would look a more fancy in a sense. It would have, it's kind of looked like a little bit like. Aizen's and Byakuya's put together. Since if you think about it, Zangetsu and Getsu, Kyoka Sweet Getsu, you can hear the Getsu at the end. So I'm thinking they're similar in Zanpakuto, so the Zanpakuto should look similar. And if you actually compare Ishin's blade and Aizen's blade, they have a little similarity. So I was thinking Ichigo should get a version of that blade, but it would kind of look like Byakuya's blade since it's kind of from his soul and all. So yeah, it, it's a sword. Okay, that's all you need to know. A katana. It's not a wakazashi. It's not a spear like Ikaku's. But never mind. But basically, he would um, head over to the academy. Now, once he would pretty much get there, he would see all the academy students like Kira, Renji, Rukia, which is not who is not pretty like adopted into the Kuchiki clan yet. So yeah. So basically they would have met, they kind of would have like formed all of a friend group in a sense. So it would have been Hinamori, it would have been um, Rukia, Renji, Kira, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, the ninth squad lieutenant, um, I don't know, his uh, Zanpakuto is Kazashini. I can't remember his name. He has a 6'9 tattoo on his right cheek and he has a scar down his right eye. No, yeah, 6'9 tattoo on his left cheek, scar down his left, right eye, right eye. Uh, Shuhei, yeah, that's his name. So yeah, they would all form their little friend group in a sense, and they would all get their first classes. Like they would do a few tests, like do a few keto, and then they would have you fight one of the instructors in swordsmanship. Then they would have you uh, basically do a spar with a Hakuda expert, and then they would have you do like speed like ho ho like sh show you like you know trying to see uh how far developed is your shimpo so like they understood like nobody has like perfect shimpo yet so it's okay if you really like didn't get that far in the ho ho area but everything else you should be at least average but pretty much ichigo being literally trained by byakuya being trained by uh, other captains and other noble families he would have been quite strong and prodigy and like <laughs> Prodigy, not prodigy in a sense since Ichigo's already a prodigy he has unlimited potential so basically not, like Ichigo would literally have spars with Kenpachi and for some reason Ichigo like didn't have any trouble like he was easily like maybe blocking his uh sword attack not easily but like he would be able to dodge he would be able to dodge and have like a pretty okay fight before Kenpachi would just mop the floor with him then he would have learned Kido from like Unahana, Yamamoto. He would have learned swordsmanship from Kiraku and Uketake. And then he would have learned like um, Shunpo from Soifan and Byakuya. So yeah, that would have been an interesting uh, class, I guess you can say. And pretty much every time uh, Mayuri was there, he would always try to experiment on Ichigo as some like com uh, comedic relief in a sense. 
So we we'll go back to the students. Now Ichigo would be called up by the keto expert. It is from the um, the keto squad, I guess. That would really fused with the squad five after Urohara was uh, exiled. So the keto core kind of became part of squad five. So somebody from the squad five, a little more higher, like third seed, would ask him to come up and ask him to do Haro number thirty three, so called sweet, and pretty much. Um, Nar <laughs> like Naruto, fuck. I'm just kidding. But basically, Ichigo would put his hand up, uh, kind of whispered incantations before uh, doing Haru number 33, Sokatsui. And pretty much a huge blue um, ball of fire would, ex would escape from his hand, and it would pretty much create an explosion in the sky. So it would have been okay. It was decent. It was, you know, it was pretty good to keto. And then he would still, you know, he would start to list off other basic keto like uh, Bakura number four, Haro number four, Haro number fifty-four, others, normal level keto, and Ichigo would be able to do it quite easily. Then the, the um, swordsman or the Zanjutsu teacher would ask him to come over, and uh, he would like pick up his asuchi or his sword that he always carries around him, and he would start to unsheathe it. And he would start to get into a fight with the Zanjutsu master where everyone else is doing the Ho-Ho, Kido, or the um, Hakuda. Like, they're either like going through the test so they can be uh, put in certain classes so they can progress and get higher and higher into the academy. So Ichigo would start clashing and pretty much have his spar with the Zanjutsu master which he will, he'll do relatively well and he would actually pretty much almost beat said um, master but let's just say uh, <laughs> experience is over at, like um, talents in a sense so yeah uh, each girl would pretty much get placed in like um, pretty high classes for zanjutsu and kido so far he would head over to the ho ho master and pretty much soy fun herself like out of nowhere just came and wanted to do it herself since as you can see soy fun is quite a prideful person when it comes to shunpo so she wanted to test her kind of like pseudo version of a prodigy in a sense and they would start like um they would kind of do like their hakuna fight and their ho-ho fight at the same time i guess you can say but it was still count as like ho-ho so Soifan would start like fighting Ichigo or sparring Ichigo and every time they were about to beat each other they would either use the um, the, um, the technique where you switch places and a piece of your clothes so you can escape being hit uh, I wish I, I I literally remembered it but I don't remember the name it's like it's the third ho-ho technique um, it's like a shihoan technique I think so every time they were about to beat each other they would always use this uh, escape technique so pretty much they would start to get um closer and closer to ending fight like um each, each girl would pretty much like throw a punch at her face soy fun would kind of move to the left grab his arm pull him towards before like uh grabbing it and kind of like putting it behind his back before um keeping it in place and that would have pretty much ended the fight. Soifan would have won since Soifan, like I said, experience trumps talent. She is the uh, the head of the uh, Omn Omnitskido and the captain of squad too. So, like I said, all classes he would get advanced placements in those classes. So he'd probably get the top of the top. So after all the placements, uh, Ichigo and his friends, they would meet up and start to go over. Arukyo got into Keto, like high Keto and uh, high um, Ho-Ho, while getting average in other classes. Renji would get average in like Keto, he, like, he would literally explode in his face. He's not really good at Keto. And um, when it comes to Zanjutsu, he was very advanced in it. He's pretty good at Zanjutsu. Same thing with Shuhei. Momo was high in Keto. She's pretty good at Keto, pretty okay at Zanjutsu anything else is pretty much average and then kira kira's like zanjutsu keto kind of like more of a everything type of fighter and after they would pretty much finish up school they would head over and just kind of chill the rest of the day now we'll do a time skip for routes one year now in this time pretty much uh what would happen is tosha would come in and he would pretty much quickly join the academy and kind of just get easy marks and pass the whole course and becoming captain 
and I know he kind of becomes captain before like in the timeline I kind of like butchered the timeline here but I kind of want to have it this way so since you know Toshi is kind of young so it seems kind of logical since Hinomori I remember her coming back from the academy and her and Toshiro would pretty much eat watermelons so it would seem kind of logical for Toshiro to start right about now. Ichigo would have had his own progression and he would have been close to graduating all he had to do was get Shikai. So he's been spending each night meditating, uh, training with Kenpachi and training Oh, <coughs> Damn, sorry about that. I should, probably should have paused the recording when I was about to sleep. Uh, never mind. But basically, sorry about that. What would happen is uh, he would start training every night, every day, just whatever he can to start trying to get a Shikai. And pretty much one night, he would be uh, sleeping, and like he would have, he would have fell asleep from basically training uh, like for hours at that point. So he would wake up, and he would be in this skyscraped area, and he would be on the edge when he would see this old man, um, like you know, brown hair, a little, not like a mustache, but you can see it starting to grow there. He had these weird boots, and he had like a, a reddish jacket with like a white uh, collar uh, shirt on the inside and he would see that this ha maybe is his Zanpakuto but um, when the Zanpakuto would go to basically introduce himself when he would say his name because like, when he was gonna say Zangetsu it would be blurred on his ears now pretty much the uh, Zangetsu would explain to Ichigo that his fear is plugging his ears so he would go through that same process he's not really turning into a hollow but he would still have to find the uh, his zanpakuto and pretty much he would find his zanpakuto and he would you know say zangetsu and he would pretty much get his shikai now his shikai would look relatively the same i wasn't really going to give him like the two shikai i was planning to give him both of his zanpaktos at first but then i realized i was a little bit op since he would just kind of like one shot his enemies and i'm trying to have him progressively get stronger and stronger now um, Piakia would be sleeping until he would feel a powerful like outburst of energy and then he would pretty much go to Ichigo's um, like area of the training ground and he would see Ichigo's like covered in blue aura and he would just start rising and his blade would start shifting and it would become into the Shikai form and pretty much Piakia would be kind of excited on the inside but he would still keep his usual um, stoic look and pretty much it was just revealed that, like to him at least, that Ichigo has attained Shikai. So once Ichigo would wake up, uh, they would start smart sparring immediately. So like, Byakuya would not hold back. I mean, I'm not saying he's going Bankai or something, but he's going Shikai, they're fighting. And pretty much Byakuya would kind of do the same thing that Urahara did. There's like no, there's no place for fear in the battle. You have to, you know, keep going forward, don't stop. If you, uh, if you look back, you'll age. If you stop, you'll die. And pretty much Ichigo would raise his blade, putting all the Ryatsu you can, and his eye color would change kind of to that, that blue tint like he always does when he gets a Ryatsu boost. So he'd raise his blade before slicing it down, causing like a blue arc of blue energy to escape from his blade. This is pretty much like a Getsuga Tensho, but he didn't really say Getsuga Tensho. And like Byakuya would see this and he would put like a, a wall of um, Senbo and Sakura in front of him before like an explosion would occur. I mean the training ground survived at least, that's that's the point. So once the smoke would clear, we would see uh, Byakuya like pretty much having like cuts all over his arm and he would have like a Senbo and Sakura shield still there but it would have caused an effect on him. So once he would put down Senbo and Sakura and seal it back into his blade before she didn't get would congratulate Ichigo and be able to even cut him and uh, he would then tell him to go to bed and right when he's walking off he would have basically thought in his head you know he's just like his mother something like that something that your father would say or at least someone like him would say uh, when seeing his son grow up in a sense so uh, after the night is over next day Ichigo would head over to the academy and he would show everyone that he attained Shikai so this would show that he can pretty much um, like become a Shinigami or join the Gotei 13. So what happened is, if you're wondering which squad he's going to join and what would happen from there, uh, well he's going to join the 11th squad. 
Now, if you guys are wondering, why would he join that barbarian that barbarian squad? Or at least that's what Biakia says. You know, why would he join that squad? Number one, Ichigo's already been sparring Kenpachi his whole life. Like, ever since he can hold a blade and properly swing it. So, he, when he's always fighting Kenpachi, he always somehow relies on his instinct. And he likes uh, being on the brink of death. I don't know. He loves fighting. He never really said it out loud. But deep inside of him, he knows he loves fighting. So the next day, he would head over to the 11th uh, squad, where he would see this little girl, like, not even, like, four feet. It was, like, not even one foot. I'm just kidding. But, like, you would see Yachiro, and she was, like, the lieutenant of the um, 11th squad. And she would pretty much kind of do the same thing she did in canon, where she, like, um, calls him Ichi or something like that. And pretty much he would meet up with Ikaku and introduce himself. So would, he would meet like Hio and Chika and meet up with Kampachi. Kampachi would be mad excited. He'd be like, let's fight. I heard you got Shika. And pretty much uh, they would start fighting. All right, Like it wasn't much. All they did was fight. So they would start to fight and pretty much they it would start to get a little serious. Like Ichigo had that whole blue aura and they were clashing. And pretty much um, Ichigo would want to try that technique he tried on Byakuya last night. So he'd raise his blade for uh, swinging it, and he, he tried to remember that same feeling that was etched in his soul, and that was pretty much the get to get feeling, if you don't know what I'm saying. So he would swing the blade down, and a huge blue arc would come out of his blade that'd be get to get. So uh, now Kamachu would get mad excited. He says that this is this is my killer, which like if you get him more excited, like you know having something that could possibly kill you that's like pretty cool so he would rip off his eye patch and it would cause a huge blue um riatsu to explode towards the sky and pretty much all the captains could sense this like kampashi hasn't really took off his eye patch in a while and for him to be going all out and, you know they would also sense ichigo's uh, riatsu so they probably thought it was just a normal uh, spar so they would just get back to work anyway so um ichigo would then like kind of compress all of the gets get instinctively of course he's not really realizing he's doing this and they would go for a clash now what would happen is they would then pretty much do a clash and they would appear like kind of like how leo and shredder did the clash in the 2003 version of um season one of um teenage mutant ninja turtles and pretty much shredder's head helmet like falls off it's kind of something like that but kenpachi's head doesn't fall off they would then clash and they would be in that same position, like I said, as Leo and Shredder, and pretty much all like shoulder cuts, um, back cuts, anything, chest cuts, it would just start exploding in nothing but blood. And pretty much, um, it would kind of be in the tie, but Kampashi would be like, ah, ha, ha, you win. Kind of like he did in canon with the original fight in the Soul Society arc. So. Ichigo and Kamachi they would head over to the 4th division to get healed and all and pretty much everyone would be quite surprised Ichigo just became a 4th uh, seat I think no yeah 4th seat nobody's like Ikaku's the 3rd seat and Wachika's the 5th seat so he could be the 4th seat so the 4th seat just beat the captain and people thought you know he didn't really kill him but there wasn't 200 um watchers but he if he actually tried to kill Kampachi, he might have taken the place of the 11th squad captain but i mean <laughs> they both knew that wasn't their intention so they would basically get healed up and that'll actually be the end of this part so pretty much i'll explain the events that took place um ichigo is born i explained a little bit the events before that then Ichigo trains with all, pretty much all the captains, or most of them at least. And then he joins the academy, meets up with his friends, you know, like Rukia, Renji, Shuhei, uh, Akira, Momo, and uh, yeah, I think I got everyone. And then he would pretty much after that, about a year later, he would get a Shikai after meeting old men on Getsu. Then he would have his spar the next day with Kenpachi and he would pretty much like literally, he would, it would be a tie, but Kenpachi admitted he lost. So yeah. So basically, if you guys don't know what I mean or don't understand last part, I said like, I didn't really understand it. I didn't really explain that um, Rukia being there. So basically, you know, Ichiko's existence created, um, like, I guess a rift 
uh, between Byake actually meeting Hisano, which would then would have led to Rukia being there. So I'm gonna explain it here, so there's no any um, confusion if it ever does come along. So pretty much what would happen is after um, Masaki died, then like Byakuya would have met Hisana. I think that's the more logical reasoning. So yeah, that's what would have occurred. So instead of Byakuya getting his Shikai from the death of Masaki, it would have, you know, I mean, sorry, Hisana, it would have pretty much been before Masaki in a sense. So I wanted him to have Shikai before. So it would have been way better and way a little more understandable since having like, you know, it's Byakuya, you know, it has to be strong in some way. Like, how do you just not have Shikai? So pretty much without further ado, guys, uh, let's get straight into this what if or resuming. But yeah, roll that intro. Now we resume this what if right after the fight between Ichigo and Kenpachi. Now, pretty much they just they just went all out. I mean, Kampachi admitted he won, but it was sort of like a tie. And pretty much, Unohana can see that uh, Kampachi is slowly and slowly starting to um, slowly release his uh, seals on himself that he put there since he wants to win a fight. So he restrains himself. So you can see this due to Ichigo's uh, raw strength, this causes Kampachi to start to want to become stronger and stronger. So, which is pretty good, you know. <laughs> Uh, so pretty much uh, Unohana is kind of worried because then she wouldn't be able to like um, fulfill or her forgiveness for her sin for originally causing Kenpachi to restrain himself. So yeah. So basically after Ichigo and Kenpachi would have recovered from their fights, they would have went back to the 11 squad and pretty much Kenpachi would have received the mission. Now this mission would have been like a joint mission with squad 13 or Ukitake squad. Now they were gonna hunt down the squad that killed Kai and Shiba. So they were already prepared for a hollow that can't be sensed and it's pretty well. It's not like it's uh, pretty uh, well classed in the Menos Grande you know, system. So they would have met up and they would have been prepared to go on this hunt for the hollow and um they would be in that same forest they would be walking around and there wouldn't just be that hollow like that one hollow that killed kyan it would have been like hundreds of other hollows so they would have probably spent the next day just cutting down as many hollows as they can so uh pretty much what would happen is maybe that next evening or that next like early morning they would have met uh, or like ran into that hollow so the hollow is like basically like completely different from what it originally was because it possessed Kain's body. So pretty much it would like dash towards uh, Ukitake going to try to like um, slash him with his hands like its bare hands like it had claws. So it was trying to slash him and pretty much Ukitake would dodge. He couldn't really use his Shikai in that situation since it's, there's no energy attack to redirect and he's a little more sick. Uh, this, which is why you know, um, you know, Rukia had to kill the Hollow. So yeah. So pretty much what would happen is uh, Ichigo would un, you know, take his uh, katana out of his sheath from his waistband, and he would um, kind of like raise his sword in the air for pretty much just like slashing it down. Now this would cause like a pure wave of just Ryatsu to escape from his blade and it would go and the hollow would turn around just like the few mere seconds before being hit like down straight down the middle of his chest and pretty much just to cause like blood to like escape from his chest and um, pretty much what he would do next is he would uh, put his fingers towards the hollow and he would do Bakuro number 61 Rikucho Kuro and this would pretty much bound the hollow in restraints. Now, pretty much what would happen next is, uh, you know, Rukia would go try to use Sodeno Shuriyuki and use her first dance um, to basically cause a circle of ice to appear from under the hollow and to trap him. So, pretty much then she would do her second dance, Hakura, I think that's the name. And she was like, Sunegamai. Uh, Hakara. 
hakuren, hakuren properly. So she would pretty much send like she would stab this ground four times before releasing an ice wave. This would kind of like uh, counteract with the other, and she was hoping that it would shatter, like uh, it would completely get frozen by the first one, and then once it was hit by the second one, it would kind of like um, shatter into little pieces. You know how you see in some shows where the main character or character has ice abilities and it causes the people to shatter into little pieces it's kind of like that and that's what she was hoping for but that's actually what happened but the hollow seemed to have high speed regeneration and managed to conceal himself so that's an interesting hollow let you know so uh pretty much what would happen is after the attack would land you know like i said the hollow would pretty much regenerate and it would get back up and for some reason ichigo's attack wore it off and the ice wore it off so they knew the only way was like a combination attack that completely erased him from existence so ukutake would kind of gather a shikai and what they were what he was going to do is have ichigo send a getsuga at ukutake with rukia and it would kind of been like an ice type getsuga in a sense and ukutake would send it back twice the power and hopefully maybe they would take down the hollow and this is what they did obviously using keto so to bound the hollow let's just say like 61 62 and 63 uh, you know bakudo number 61 62 and 63 then uh they would you know ichigo would then like grab the the bandage uh, on the handle of his, his sword before like swinging it above his head before like um bringing it back down and with enough momentum or a lot of momentum before releasing the Getsuga and this would go right for Rukia and Rukia or like in the middle near her at least and then she would use her Hakuren and it would merge with the Getsuga before being sent at uh, Ukitake. Ukitake would use a Shikai send it back full power maybe twice the power maybe three times uh, at the hollow and it would be quite big it, would pro it would have been huge like one of Ichigo's holified Bankai Getsugas like the one he used in the Hellverse movie when they were first going in it caused the size of a nuke cloud and it's kind of like that so this completely destroyed the hollow there was nothing remaining not even a slime like a piece of slime left because it was kind of more slime based that's how we took over Kain's body kind of like the sludge villain so after they pretty much took down the hollow they would they would have grieved i mean not ichigo he didn't really know kain that much i mean even though i mean he has no relations to the shiba clan so he's not like uh, kain's cousin or something like that so he has no relation to the uh, shiba clan so that's what's completely different he has no relation to uh, kukaku or uh, kanju so that's 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 definitely the impact of ichigo being a noble at first, when I was recording the video, I was like, I could just make him a Shiba that was born in Soul Society, but I, I kind of want to make my own twist. I did. I want to do something that people weren't expecting. So, pretty much what would happen is after the mission, uh, it would it would have pretty big mission. This Hollow was like maybe Lieutenant Captain class, and they all took him out. So, let's just say uh, Kampachi was quite very happy at ichigo like so happy that they had another spar and let's just say it went the same way of course so let's just say the go tight 13 they and central 40 i mean central 46 doesn't really do much but they they don't want nor um ichigo and kampachi to basically spar i know it's kind of like a tangent i'm going up but i'm trying to build some story okay ichigo and kampachi are strong they should never fight because then squad 11 division it wouldn't exist the barracks wouldn't be there it would be destroyed it would either be destroyed by like kampachi sword swings or getsuga so before i go on any more tangents um we'll do another time skip i'd say about maybe five years now after the five years ichigo would have went on his own like training arc like he would have still done missions for the 11th division but in this time ishin would have defected uh not really the same way you should go like ishin would have still defected and pretty much like saved somebody like saved uh, another quincy but it would have the outcome would have been completely different for so pretty much what would happen is he would save like another like another quincy in a sense that was in the world of living but was from the kurosaki clan 
and it would have like they wouldn't have had a kid or something like that no the Quincy would have just died uh, a few years later maybe like 20 years later and Ishin would have just gotten his Shinigami powers and would have just kind of been like the pseudo version of the Shinigami Deco. Like he should have, like he would have went with his like doc, the life of a doctor, but like he wasn't really in Shinigami form that much, only when there's like a hollow nearby. It's, I know it's hard to explain, but it's hard to explain this whole process. So, um, also in these five years, Ichigo would have learned his Bankai. That's, that's very you know important like he would have learned it in maybe one year in the next four years he would master it so yeah it would have been it's good for each gonna master his bunker because the first time he, he didn't really master it quite well and over time he mastered it well or better at least so what would happen is ichigo would get proficient in kido hakuda just every form of being shinigami because he's been thinking about becoming a captain of squad 10 so what happened is he would go to Byakuya and he would request, you know, a meeting, a captain's meeting, you know, a proficiency exam, you know, so he can try to become a captain of squad 10. And uh, pretty much Byakuya would have been quite proud of Ichigo for his progression in all these years. And Rukia, uh, I think Rukia, or not I think, Rukia would have gotten a promotion to third seat in her um, division. Like, there would have been third seats, two third seats, since um, Yukutake didn't want to replace the lieutenant's uh, position, so he just made two third seats. I mean, he technically can do that, he is the captain of that division, so he just found a loophole. So, what would happen is, um, Byakuya would kind of, um, I guess in a sense, start the exams, and all, like, maybe like Captain Kiraku, Captain Ukutake, Yamamoto, and, uh, soy fun would have been there so it yeah so pretty much they would start the captain's proficiency exam and pretty much they would start to tell ishigo they would like have another contestant who is like wanting to apply for squad 10 and this would have been toshiro so toshiro would have mastered his own bankai not mastered sorry would have had his own bankai so pretty much what would happen is they would have them fight each other not like to the death or anything just just fight and pretty much like they would want them to have like use their own bankai to see which one is better in a sense so th they know who is um, better at being captain they, it wouldn't just been the spar they would have done a test to see which situation would play out and what would they do and ichigo would have pretty much done that test just like toshiro they would have done a keto test, the Hakuda test, so that's why Soifan is there for the Hakuda and uh, Ho Ho. Yamamoto was there for keto. He's a very proficient keto. And pretty much um, Okatake and Shunsu were there for like the swordsman part. Then Ichigo would have had his own spar. So pretty much Ichigo and Toshiro's fight would start, and pretty much he would unsheath his blade from his um, like waistband. And he would uh, immediately go into Shiga. He's not underestimating Toshiro. He looked at his mission, um, like ratio. <laughs> I don't want to say ratio, but you know yeah, how many missions he did. And he has no failed mission. All the missions he did, he completed all of them in with success. So, I mean, Ichigo did do that as well. It's just like you know, it's just um, a reminder that he shouldn't like hold back. So he would go immediately to Shikai, raise his blade, and use a Getsuga. Now, Toshiro is immediately ready to block, but out of nowhere, the Getsuga would disappear into nothing. And pretty much, he would put his, like, put his guard down, and pretty much Ichigo was expecting this. So he would appear behind, uh, he would appear behind uh, Toshiro, and he would kind of punch him in the back of the face. In the back of the back of the head and uh like kind of like in the neck area like hitting a point in his muscles and then he would have done it in maybe the back area and in the back of the knees and sorry would have been seeing this and she like she knew these are one of the major weaknesses in the uh, body in the shinigami's body of course when it comes to fighting and she would have been quite surprised because since only like she hoans know this so it would have like Maybe she was thinking maybe Yorichi left something behind to Byakuya, like when he taught him, when she taught him, I mean. So, 
after Ichigo would basically like punch his nervous system, like basically almost like weakening it, like weakening his Ryatsu at that point, he would then pretty much jump back and Toshiro would just get his sword towards Ichigo before activating his Bankai, uh, Daigin and Hyori Maru. And pretty much Ichigo would put a sword, you know, towards um, <laughs> Toshiro, and his bandages of his Zangetsu of Zangetsu would wrap around his forearm before he would uh, go into Bankai. I, I if I said <laughs> I, w- I really want to say Bankai, but I feel like I would screw it up. So like I cannot screw it up like how you say it, but just like the tone, like the you know how Ichigo says it. He's like Bankai. He has that certain tone. I just I can't do that tone. It's just not within my power so pretty much he would do bankai and a huge explosion of blue riatsu would happen and it would start to turn into red and it would co- pretty much cause a tornado of riatsu to form and good thing they were in like a room created by mayuri so the, this room wasn't getting destroyed no matter how many bankais he put in here even the sogyuku couldn't destroy this room so pretty much what would happen is uh, Ichigo would then appear with his sword and he would kind of uh, like swing it like not at Toshiro but to get the you know how in Ichigo when he first uses Bankai there's a little like a wind surrounding his blade so he like swinged it and it disappeared in a sense it's kind of this cool nostalgic moment it was kind of like that so Ichigo would then um, you know be revealed in his Bankai and Yamamoto and other captains would be like that's that's doesn't look like Bankai at all. Even Byakuya was thinking this. And pretty much what would happen, I mean, only Soifan wasn't thinking this since she has a quite a small Shikai. Nobody really thinks. Like, when the, when they didn't see her Shikai or don't even know her, they think that little sting is gonna do something. So she kind of was expecting something big to come out of this. So Toshiro would be like, you know, what's that little thing gonna do? Not like arrogantly, but he's like, you know, he's questioning him to himself. Before Ichigo would appear out of nowhere, his sword to Toshiro's neck, and uh, pretty much uh, Ichigo is like, so you're thinking, well, ooh, you know, only the blade changed. What's this gonna do? And he answers the question. Well, this is gonna, this is what's gonna do to you. This is what's gonna do to you. Okay, yeah. So he's basically explaining, like Toshiro thinks, hey, this blade is weak. This blade cannot reach me. It's the only thing that changed with his Bankai is a blade, a different blade. So Ichigo pretty much speed blitzing him showed the difference between their power. So then he would back away and Toshiro questioned him, why why'd you take your sword away from my throat? Not that Ichigo was going to kill him or anything. It's just like he could have easily won that. And um, pretty much uh, Toshiro would have seen this as arrogant. Why would he take his sword away from his neck? He basically would have won already. And he would have kind of a little mad before using Hyori Senbi, a dragon's tail, and um, he would have swinged his sword down a huge uh, iceberg would kind of be sent towards Ichigo. Ichigo would then, you know, coat his uh, sword in Getsuka before, like, actually putting more reacts into it and keeping the pressure of the Getsuka into his blade before just swinging it. This would like cause the iceberg to be split into millions of tiny pieces and the Getsuga would be sent at Toshiro. Toshiro would then use a Bakuro number 81, Danku, and which Ichigo predicted when he would um, start flash stepping around um, Toshiro like, you know, uh, making after images. <laughs> Yo, someone actually told me that making after image was subsonic, but that's off topic. So. Pretty much, he would be running around or flash stepping around uh, Toshiro, making as many after images as he can. And he would start to, like, Toshiro would start to send as many ice attacks as he can to try to uh, like, eliminate which one was the uh, after image or which one wasn't. But, like, pretty much, um, Ichigo would appear behind uh, Toshiro before stabbing him in that same place he stabbed Byakuya with his Bankai. And pretty much, what would happen is uh, he would have infused some Getsuga into this. So it would have done way more damage. So instead of just like stabbing through, he would have twisted it and it would have up a few inches. And a few inches when you're stabbing someone, that's, that's a lot. So he would then use a binding spell like Bakudo number 61 before then using um, Bakudo number 79, Kyoshibari, and kind of keeping him in place. So then Toshiro would then lose and pretty much the captains would have figured out what his, uh, shik- uh, his Bankai is. 
and uh, pretty much Shoifeng would be quite surprised. Uh, I mean, everyone is. Uh, so they both realized, or they all realized, that what Ichigo does is he compresses all that um, Ryatsu uh, into his blade, into his outfit, into everything, like just himself, and it gives him immense speed, strength, and movement, and the opponent couldn't keep up. So yeah, yeah they would explain his Bankai, and then after that, Ichigo would then be handed over the like would be told he's captain of squad 10 the orientation will be happening tomorrow and he'll be given his captain's coat there so after this uh, Byakuya and Ishigo would have head out and they would have walked over to the certain place in the uh, Kuchiki uh, household and by the way they would have been uh, like his um you know, Hisana's uh, like uh memory place so like it was in the same place as Masaki they went they were going to visit Masaki but like they were kind of buried in the same place so yeah kind of feels awkward so then Byakuya would tell Ichigo that he has something to tell him and I'm speaking really quiet for this so I can really get the effect this is an ASMR so calm down so pretty much um, Byakuya would tell Ichigo that he's gonna make him the head of the Kuchi clan the the 27th head yeah I think or no Byakuya is the 28th, so then Ichigo would be the 29th. But basically, Byakuya is not like Ichigo is not going to be the head of the clan like right at that moment, but like sooner, like maybe in 50 to 100 years. And that's not long, that's pretty quick. So Ichigo would kind of be a little like a little proud of that. He's, he's going to be ahead of the clan, that's going to be really cool because now he can change. He can change something in soul society he's one of the head of the five great nobles clients or at least he's gonna be so then um they would pretty much you know byakuya and ichigo they kind of chill for the rest of the night i don't know drink tea whatever they do oh i know what they definitely do they would definitely do like that art that byakuya does i, I actually don't know the exact name but like he does this painting but with, with a huge um i guess you can say i don't really know how you call it I'm gonna have to search it up, but basically they would kind of like paint for the rest of the night while drinking some tea. As if you see in the Shinigami, um, like the 30 seconds after an episode or before, it shows like Cone in the intro before they would show like Renji hanging out with the captains. Like first they would hang out with Yamamoto, then they would hang out with uh, Unahana and Yachiro as they're eating flowers, and other stuff like that. This this uh, part it shows like they're painting and yeah like with Byakuya so it would have been quite cool so yeah after that night um, the next day Ichigo would have went to his orientation I guess it's called um, before he would be given his like captain's cloak and it would have like the number 10 Sanji on it not this the kanji not the Sanji kanji and uh, yeah he would head over you would, like head over to the 10th squad the clone the quadrants area so once he would get there he would meet up with toshiro and rangiko and he can obviously from his first look rangiko is quite the slack off and she's the lieutenant so he knew automatically he was gonna make toshiro the lieutenant like toshiro actually put him like he was really strong so he, that day he would have made toshiro the uh lieutenants and toshiro would have, he wasn't that disappointed since he at least he got a promotion some way so he was, he was either gonna get captain or he's gonna get lieutenant uh rangiku didn't really care that she became third c because that was just less work and that means she can just slack off a little less or she can do all that work pretty easily then slack off but whatever it is then after this ichigo would pretty much start to like i wouldn't say like with the members but like he would have put them through some like training like he they would have they would have greatly increased like after maybe a few months the 10th squad would have dramatically increased they would have became maybe the second or third best squad kind of behind the second squad and the 11th squad so they would have became quite powerful in their own way so yeah all right now we resume this what if after ichigo kind of settled in uh the 10th squad now pretty much he would be going through like walking through the squad looking around and over this time the squad would have became one of the strongest squads in the whole soul society history which was actually pretty impressive like almost every person has attained shikai and has advanced levels of keto when it comes to the gotei 13 not like hot number 90 but like 
they can do like 54 or 63 pretty easily. So yeah. Now Ichigo would walk up to the mission list and he would see a like a hunting down a uh, like a few Vasta Lordes in the um, Rukongai district. Now pretty much he would then pretty much uh, like like write his signature showing like he's going on the mission and turns out he's like the mission is just him like nobody else is going with them so it's gonna be pretty difficult he's gonna fight a few Vasta Lordes by himself so he would then like uh, get a certain cloak from Aizen out of all the people Aizen gave him the stealth cloak he thought it was maybe either Soifan or Mayuri but out of all the people it was Aizen so he would have respectively, respectively accepted it and he would have put it on and he would have um you know went on his mission so um he would be on the uh, edges of soul society like on a uh, light post and he'd be looking on into the distance you know, since the vessel lordy was seen like last seen in a few districts away so he was gonna head over there and try to eliminate it or at least uh, bring it in i guess for questioning in the sense <laughs> there's nothing to question so it was obviously he was gonna have to cleanse it so he would then flash step or shunpo a few meters forward and he would just start you know flash stepping now he would then pretty much uh you know find himself a manga scene and he would walk up to like this certain building this building was completely destroyed so he would start investigating looking any clues that the the hollow left behind so he would have found that there was these little pieces of uh, uh fur that bats leave behind from their wings i guess you can say it was literally like the same thing now this is foreshadowing all right if you guys know any certain espadas who have bat-like features when they use the resurrection i just gave you a massive hey it should not be hard okay if somebody actually guesses this in the comments i'll give you a nice imaginary cookie with the power of the visionary all right pog so um pretty much what would happen is he would start to investigate the scene and he would pretty much uh, see that this was caused by a bat-like hollow since it had like fur that only uh, a, like a bat would uh, like, um, shed, shed, yeah. Like only a bat would shed these, uh, shed this fur, fur, yeah. So pretty much he would continue and he would have found, uh, like he would see a light beam just flying through the sky. This would have been the Lanza de la Pengo. I think I said that right. That was a long name. So he would have went on to the scene and he would have found one of the captains. Now if you guys, if you guys are cap like if you guys are wondering, you know, which captain is this? It's obviously it's captain of squad two with Soifa. So she's basically fighting uh, Okiura. Yeah, it's Okiura. <laughs> I mean it's Okiura kind of uh, a little bit after he got his own evolution through the Hokyoku and pretty much uh, Okiura was pretty much getting uh, going on a recon reconnaissance mission in the Soul Society. Like Aizen wanted him to do that. So he would have came onto the scene, or Ichigo would have came onto the scene and pretty much seen uh, Okiura about to throw a Lanza del Rapengo at uh, Soifan and she wasn't really prepared. I mean, it's a light beam. Some, some of the captains are not even light speed yet. <laughs> I'm not even gonna get into that, but it was a light speed, like a light speed um, arrow in a sense, or yeah. So it's going towards um, Soifan, and Michiko gets in front of her and then uses Bakudo um, number 81, Danku, before uh, then turning around and Ukira would be in his usual emotionless tone and say, you know, yeah, who are you? I can see that you have the similar captain's cloak of this um, lady here so I assume you're from the same uh, association so I assume I still have to kill you so he would then make another Lanza del Ra del Ra la Pango del Ra la Pago I think I said that right yeah yeah I definitely said that right it's hard to say I mean I think it's just me though so he would then you know tell Ichigo not to come forward since this causes a lot of destruction technique causes a lot of destruction before he would throw it towards Ichigo and like Ichigo would then kind of 
move his head to the left and it would barely miss his head so he wouldn't like the beam of light would pass him and it would land a little bit further back and it would take out like the whole district like this thing causes like a lot of damage so ichigo would then put his sword in front of him before activating his bankai and then like quickly no hesitation at all he would then raise his sword into the air and then do like um start charging up energy into his sword before using a get to get tensho now uh, a red beam of light would ex um, escape from Ichigo's sword and uh, Ichigo's like Tensei on Getsu and uh, it would go right for Okura. Now this would pretty much scar him right through the middle of his chest similar to how Grimjaw has this scar from Ichigo. Now Okura uh, obviously using his high speed regeneration would heal up from the attack before getting back up and Ichigo realizes he has high speed regeneration so he's the higher tier of the Vastalorde or whatever he is and he would start to whisper something into himself well it's an incantation the oozing crest of corruption the arrogant vessels of madness deny the seizing urge to let things stun and flicker disrupt the sleep the crawling princess of iron the internally self-destructing dole of mud unite repulse fill the earth and know your powerlessness hado number 90 kuro hitsuki or uh <laughs> hado no kyuji kuro hitsuki and uh, pretty much a purple cube would fill up around uh, Okura, making like a square perimeter or cube perimeter before uh, Ichigo would then turn around and the, it would pretty much close in and it would, you know, the technique would activate. I'm actually, to this day, I'm still confused with what the technique does. I either think it closes in and pretty much suffocates you and there's like some type of, so there's like millions of swords that just come together and does a lot of damage there or just a bunch of millions of arrows on the inside i'm still confused to this day but <laughs> neither way what it does the cube would disappear and ichigo would be facing his back towards okura kind of like the only cool guys don't look at explosions kind of thing and um okura's body would then like spit of blood before he could like walk up to soifon obviously um give her give her his hand yeah said that right and um pretty much uh he would tell soifun to go for the finishing blow and soifun not even saying anything would activate her shikai not if it's not already activated and go for the two um um you know stings of her shikai uh, so yeah she would try to like, go to kill um you know okura before okura would grab her wrist and uh, pretty much say the same thing that Aizen said. If you, you know, um, you know, say, oh, so you know, like two stings to kill me, right? So, you know, that that's awfully powerful. But there's one thing that made me survive, and that's um, if you're if you have more Riatsu or Reishi than an opponent that's using an ability on you, the ability will never reach them. So, due to me having more Riatsu than you, your attack didn't work. Before he would pretty much grab his sword and just like cut a slice out of chest this would pretty much cause like her chest to open up in nothing but blood and Ichigo would turn around and try to flash that behind him and uh, Okura would kind of have a good response but Ichigo would just like cut him into pieces before um you know picking up Soifan and throwing her on his, on his shoulder kind of like how uh, I'm trying to give you an example. So, Kenpachi, when he faced off against Iwachi, had like three stern riders on his shoulder. It was kind of like that. So, he would then flash step and uh, use a teleportation keto to head over to the uh, fourth squad barracks before he would um, hand her over, hand Soifan over to uh, Unahana. And Unahana would heal Soifan just like uh, she did with any other Shinigami. Now, he would then report to uh, Genryusa Yamamoto, or the head captain. And in this whole what if, this is the only time, not the only time, this is the first time he's even like presented in this uh, what if in a sense. So just let that be known. So he would then head over to the um, 
first division office and he would you know bow down in front of Yamamoto and um, he would tell Ichigo to uh, report the mission status. So Ichigo would then say uh, him and Captain Soifan had a difficult battle against a certain Vasta Lorde who seems to be half Shinigami and half Hollow, almost as if he reached a point of evolution where um, the like it's almost as if he uh, went above his limits and he pretty much emerged between a hollow and Shinigami and he starts to theorize out loud that someone else would have to make a it was almost at the product of someone's invention some an invention that makes you uh, forget the limits of reason and uh, have powers of different hollow Shinigami it's almost as if he willed it to happen it, it wasn't like you know some people would think this invention invention would be a uh, separator between hollow and shinigami but that's just like a, a very simple definition of it so pretty much uh he would tell this to yamamoto and yamamoto can obvious guess it's not just the hollow there's someone else behind this hollow in a sense so they know like their mission isn't technically over but ichigo's mission was just to defeat the vasta lorde so yeah now uh, pretty much the mission would end and we'll do a time skip about maybe six months in this six months ichigo would have been the main invest like the person investigating this uh, whole um, hollow um i guess uh, hollow shinigami um person whoever is making these uh, hollows or shinigamis um have powers of the uh, the opposite um species so he would have won back and he would have read a file about Kisuke Urahara who made an invention called the Hokyoku. This pretty much separated the boundaries between Hollow and Shinigami and that's why whenever um, Soul Society quote unquote caught him uh, due to Sosuke Aizen, um, he was uh, definitely exiled because he already made an invention and they already seen the captains like the exiled captains, the missing captains, they already had like Hollow uh, mask on like captains and lieutenants so it was they, they can easily made a quick correlation and that's why the central 46 didn't take long to make their judgment so he would have made an investigation on Sosuke Aizen himself and nobody knew about this only him Byakuya and Yamamoto so he realized that just Byakuya no, I'm sorry not Byakuya he realized Aizen himself wasn't as he was just too nice so I know it kind of sounds weird in reality but you can't just be that nice without like a narrative or a purpose behind it. So for the next six months, like I said earlier, he would be investigating Aizen. And this is when he would have came up and he would have saw like the, um, he would have like followed him. So he would have followed him um, like just every way. And he didn't find anything, but he knew Aizen could probably, he knows like someone's following him. So he's being a little extra careful in the sense it's just it's definitely not far-fetched for Aizen to do that. So pretty much Aizen knows Ichigo's investigating him. He knows that he's being, you know, Ichigo's following him. So that's why Ichigo didn't really find anything incriminating. So yeah, Aizen realizes he might have to try the hollow experiment since Ichigo is way stronger than the other captains. So he has more potential. He has limitless, unlimited, limitless potential yeah that's that's the word and uh he's the quincy and he's already like quincy and hollow and shinigami so he just needs to awaken the shinigami uh, not shinigami the hollow and it would pretty much merge with the shinigami and making a new type of being so one night uh about six months later like i said earlier a um uh they would have went on a hollow hunting mission him and toshiro and um Squad uh, Division 9, which would have pertained to Kaname and the other squad members, and just letting you know, um, Rukia would have came along since, uh, in this time, like, she, actually, she's like pretty strong. Like, she does have Bankai or anything, since her Bankai is like really dangerous in a sense to herself and others, uh, not in a bad way. It's just like she needs to train it and master it, but yeah. So, if you guys are confused, what is the relationship and to Rukia to the Kuchiku clan and all it's literally the same in canon I, I think I explained this in part two but uh, just to clear up any confusion so yeah they would have went on the mission and 
Toshiro, uh, Rukia, and Ichigo would have went with squad line. So that would have pertained to Kaname and Hisagi. That was pretty much it. So pretty much they would have found a white. Yeah, so Aizen would have created another white. So what would happen is Ichigo and um, white, or soon to be Zangetsu in a sense, they would be staring off at each other and uh, they would start to fight. Like, um, like white, I'm gonna start calling him Zangetsu, it's a little easier. He would uh, start rushing towards Ichigo, um, you know, kind of releasing a mighty roar, you know. And he looked quite weird, he had two horns, almost, he had the Ryatsu of a Shinigami, but he had the powers of a Hollow. This was very recognizable to the uh, other Hollow he fought about six months ago, uh, who had bat-like features. So, he would have raised his hand, and he would have done Bakudo number 61, Rikujo Kuro, just like any Shinigami would think, subdo, use Bakudo, try to eliminate the Hollow, just like in canon, he would do that. My canon, what canon? This is not even canon, this whole story is not canon, never mind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop myself before I go on a tangent. So he would then um, use Bakudo number 61, and then he would uh, get Bakudo number 62, the 100 railings, and he would throw it, and probably around six or seven of them would stick to um, uh, White's spot, like Izangetsu's body, like the chest area, keeping him in place. Then Ichigo would then use Bakudo number 63, uh, Sajo Sabaku, which is like when binding chains, or like golden chains, they would wrap around him and keep him locked up even more. Then Ichigo would then use Bakudo number 79, Kyoshibari, and um, it's like nine purple, looks like mini suns, would start to go around his body, like, like almost like in a circular motion. So like nine suns at the top would then go like, then they would start to go from left and put suns and then right in the middle of his chest a purple ball would appear this would obviously be like that mini sun from kiyoshibari and this would like actually keep in place before um pretty much he would uh, aim his blade towards uh the hollow before uh going through a few incantations which i can't remember i only remember hollow number 90's incantation but he would then um say hollow number 91 senju koten taiho so what would happen is like eight flame balls of like pinkish, I guess in a sense, would be sent towards uh, white. And this would cause a huge explosion, maybe. Yeah, not maybe, it will, to, like you can't just say maybe. So this would cause an explosion and this would probably take off his like white arm. And that's quite a feat for white. Like how did he just survive five binding keto, right? 61, 62, 63, 79, yeah. So it's four. So like, how do you survive um, four binding ketos and then get hit with a Hado in the 90s? So then um, pretty much uh, what like Zangetsu would appear right behind Ichigo and Ichigo would be kind of surprised before um, like Zangetsu would swipe and like he would split Ichigo in, Ichigo in half. And pretty much Rukia and Toshiro would be a little scared there for a second since they thought Ichigo died. But then for some reason it would just pop now if you guys don't know what this is this is the um, the uh, I can't actually remember the name I literally just remembered but it was the um, invention that Urahara used on Aizen to basically get behind him it was like a clone in a sense yep it's a portable gi guy that's what it's called so he would have used a portable gi guy to then pretty much get the upper hand in the fight appear behind uh, Zangetsu and pretty much um, like put him in the neck hold, the choke hold in a sense. So then he would then like try to uh, put an arrow, a Quincy arrow through his head. And if you guys are wondering, what the fuck? When did he learn any Quincy techniques? Are you good eyes? Like what, what are you smoking? I want some of that. No, you don't, you actually don't know. I don't smoke anything, but you don't want what I could possibly, Never mind. So if you guys are wondering, what the hell are you guys talking about? I mean, what the hell am I talking about? Um, let me explain something. So when Ichigo was growing up after Misaki died and all, that, that was definitely a fixed point in timeline. Wait, timeline. This isn't this isn't the flat. Never mind. So basically, um, Ichigo would have been growing up. Basically, Byakuya would have gave him the scroll of just Quincy techniques. He would have learned like blood vein, Quincy, like how to make Quincy arrows, how to make a sword out of his Quincy Reishi and he was told not to use it. He didn't realize he needed to at that point and he was told not to. So he didn't want to defy Byakuya. 
since that guy's like his father so like why would he so it would, at, at that point of his age of course he wouldn't think that so he would have unconsciously suppressed that memory of basically him having those techniques until like um, him like fighting Kampachi all these times going through a life death situation when he remembered and then pretty much had his own evolution so he would have put the arrow through the neck of white and he would have backed up like white would have backed up and uh like he would have gotten pretty mad and Ichigo thought he was dying so he put his guard down which was a mistake since white would then pretty much go and pretty much bite him like infect him with um like a hollow technique so like white would kind of become his inner hollow well not his inner hollow he would merge with his shinigami powers so pretty much what would happen is um Ichigo would start transforming into a hollow or not a hollow but like he's going to so his hole will start to form into his chest and all and pretty much Rukia would take him over to the fourth division and pretty much we all know what's gonna happen so Soifun and Byakuya not Byakuya himself but all the captains like most of them at least maybe three of them like um Soifun, uh, Kaname and uh, Byakuya if you guys are wondering why was Ichigo like off guard, it was because um, Kaname used his Bankai and Ichigo, so he didn't have his senses for a few seconds. Since uh, his Bankai takes away your senses, uh, except the feeling of touch. So yeah, after pretty much uh, Ichigo would head, uh, like be healed or try to, Soifun would see that he's pretty much turning into a hollow, and you know he would have, you know she would have to eliminate him. Obviously, Rukia would be like mm, fuck you link <laughs> what do you think you're doing hell so pretty much what would happen is rukia would like toshiro and would pretty much grab ichigo's body like throw it over his shoulder and then they would pretty much open a senkai mode and they would head over to the human world now if you guys are wondering why would toshiro do this he's kind of like a more person who would follow the rules and all but the thing is um out of all the people who um something that Ichigo did only he can do even though Toshiro is not captain or anything the one thing that Ichigo did that nobody did he called him Hitsugaya Taicho Taiko Taiko Taicho captain Hitsugaya and nobody has ever did that they always call them short or they ever called him Toshiro or they would have just named him normally like Toshiro I already said that though or Hitsugaya so you know Toshiro really had a massive respect for Ichigo. I'm just kidding. But basically, Ichigo was his captain. You know, he basically, like, uh, basically, I guess in a sense, made a, a unsaid rule. You know, anytime you have to protect your captain, that's the rule. It's the same thing with One Piece. You know, it's the same curriculum in a sense. So they would head over to the human world. And if you guys are wondering why the human world, just one person there that could fix this, Kisuke Urahara. Now, in this time, not this time, well, I mean technically this time, Ichigo would then be saved by Urahara himself. So once they get in, Urahara immediately uh, sensed him and they would have, he would have sensed the same energy from Ichigo as he sensed from the Vizards. So he would have immediately uh, like um, put Ichigo onto a um, bed, I guess you can say, like an operating table. So then he would have uh, got out the Hokyoku and he would have realized that the Hokyoku did not actually um, cause the user's wishes to basically destroy the boundary between Hollow and Shinigami. You realize it basically gave the users true um, what they desired the most, like their heart's desires. So Urahara would have desired that Ichigo would be saved and his um, he would kind of become a visor at that point. But it would be completely different from the normal Vizards. Ichigo is like the Hollow would then merge with his Shinigami power, so Sangetsu would be formed. So yeah, the Quincy, um, you know, the old man Sangetsu would be there, and then Tensa Sangetsu would be there if Ichigo were to go into his inner world and his Bankai state. So yeah, in his inner world, um, Ichigo would wake up and he would kind of be chained, uh, similar to how it was in the Full Bring arc, a little bit like that. So Ichigo would then easily break out the chains. Like, this is his inner world. Nobody's gonna do anything like that. So in the distance, you would see um, a that same hollow, but different. Like, he had a face. He had a, he, you know, had normal features, like a Shinigami. And he even had a sword. He had his sword, but it was, like, bleached out completely. He had, like, white, not white, like, bleached colors. It's kind of hard to explain the exact color. 
So then um, the hollow would then stare down at Ichigo and pretty much it would start their fight. So Ichigo would then kind of uh, uh, take his sword out, turn his sword out, just instinctively it would appear in his hands and he would go and slice down causing a Getsuga to form and uh, pretty much the hollow would grab it and like Ichigo was really confused how the fuck did this guy just grab his Getsuga like what do you mean like what's going on <laughs> so then um, he would then like grab the Getsuga absorb it back into himself and Zangetsu would send it back at Ichigo Ichigo would then use a Bakudo number 81 Danku and uh, pretty much Ichigo realized something this is his inner world He's the owner of this inner world. He's the king of this inner world. This hollow is, isn't going to defeat him. So he would then pretty much grab his blade, swing it by the uh, the bandages of the handle of a sheet guy. And he would have just started swinging it and gaining momentum. And he would have swung down and the Getsuga would start being sent at Ichigo. I mean, White. And uh, and this time, White would try to absorb it. But this is in, uh, Ichigo's inner world. So he would, Ichigo would think to himself, you're not allowed to absorb my Getsuga. So the Getsuga would then hit um, um, Zangetsu and he would then appear behind White, grab him, by, like, like put an arm through his chest and then start to absorb him. So back into himself in a sense. And pretty much uh, Ichigo would have completely destroyed uh, White in a sense. Not in a sense, he, he did it, okay? So after he would have absorbed um, whites he would have noticed something different for some reason he would want to like grab at his face so he would have grabbed at his face and a mask would start to form and for some reason he wasn't going out of control like he can see he was still himself and he can still like feel the uh a new boost of riatsu new boost of techniques going inside his memory like sero uh pesky's uh high speed regeneration all those hollow techniques and he has a hollow mask so yeah that's a good thing so yeah, Ichigo would then wake up and uh, uh, Urahara would kind of do some a few tests on him before this would actually start, this would actually be the end of this what if. So Ichigo would then, Ichigo and Rukia and Toshiro would kind of live with the Vizards for like a few years before they would start to live on their own. And this would cause like their own um, journey into the human world or living there in a sense. So yeah, yeah. Up. Um, last time I left off was after Ichigo literally like, you know, gutter stomps his hollow or his future Zanpakuto in a sense, and uh, he wakes up. So pretty much once he wakes up, um, he's meted by none other than Urahara Kisuke or Kisuke Urahara. Technically, I'm saying it the uh, Japanese way. Or I think other people say last name first, but wherever they say it i don't want to be too specific but um yeah so urahara kisuke would walk in and he would he would act all um he would be like you know hey curse you know hey uh, mr kurosaki and uh you know waving his hat and all and ichigo would have you know, gotten a little good look at his face and and heard the name he recognized the name from one of the stories he heard as a kid um like one of the um, exiled captains or one of the former captains did uh, like basically turned a uh, cat like eight I think it's eight so there's five okay so it's Shinji it's love it's Rose it's Lisa it's Hiori it's um I think it's eight Lisa and then Hachi and then um Mashiro then Kensei so it's nine, nine. <laughs> it doesn't matter who. So pretty much what would happen is you would have heard stories about how Urahara in one night turned them all into hollows, or that was the story, you know. They definitely manipulated the words there, but that's the story you heard. And you would have you know, asked, you know, well, didn't you turn like the um, former captains and lieutenants into hollows since they were seen with hollow mask on their face? And uh, Urahara, would kind of uh, his mood would change a little bit before he would turn back to his happy and carefree state telling Ichigo that um yeah the you know you know you know the fifth captain right fifth squad captain right and um Ichigo was like yeah that's uh Sosuke Aizen and um 
Uraharu get a serious face before saying, well, he's behind it. And Ishiko would, he wouldn't be too surprised since he literally was investigating him for six months. So that's definitely understandable. And um, he, would be, he would be like, oh, I knew it was him. And pretty much um, Uraharu would ask him, whatsoever do you mean? And Ichigo would tell him that he was pretty much following Aizen for the next, for like a few months before um, he got turned into a hollow in a sense, or got a inner hollow or a hollow part in a sense. And um, it was now, now we're here. So Urahara would explain to Aizen, not Aizen, sorry, Ichigo, that Aizen made an artifact called Hokyoku and he made a similar artifact before him. And the artifact was the power to, you know, um, kind of separate the boundaries between Hollow and Shinigami. And he used it on the Vizards and he used it on Ichigo to basically uh, have um, subdue the Hollows but gain Hollow uh, Hollow powers at the end. So um, Ichigo would have been a little, I guess, not put off, but a little interested in how he, like, that that was probably the burst of power he felt when he defeated um uh his newly zanbakuto in a sense or white or zangetsu and pretty much he told um urahara that in his inner world he defeated uh someone who looked exactly like me but it was more inverted had bleach type colors and urahara explained to ichigo that that's that form that hollow is was only in his cocoon form so it's going to continue to get stronger and stronger and you know, I, uh, Hichiko would be kind of scared, a little bit, um, but then uh, Uruharo would kind of reassure Ichigo, saying that all you have to do is learn how to use your Quincy powers properly, and uh, you'll be fine. And speaking of Quincy pro uh, powers, he felt something weird on his wrist. He looked at it, and it was didn't look like his critical, like, he didn't really have a Quincy cross, so he, he saw, like, a weird cross there, and he asked Uruharo, Quincy cross, what's a Quincy cross? And um, uh, or how I was saying, well, you, you you know, I can sense just from here that you know how to use reishi and make bows and arrows and swords, right? And use blood vein. Ichigo would respond, yeah, I thought that was just some power I had. And uh, or how would kindly, um, you know, reassure him that there's other people who use the same power, but they're not very kindly to Shinigami. But of course, if they see you, they might be more inclined to meet you in a sense uh, you know after fighting you of course since they don't really like the fact that Shin they're, you know, you're half Shinigami half Hollow and half Quincy and uh, fun fact don't try to use your Quincy powers on a Hollow because um, Hollow Reishi is poisonous towards Quincy Reishi and then he would explain how he needs to either train with Kido since Sangetsu would probably never use Kido. He's more of a swordsman guy, or he can either use Quincy techniques, and um, pretty much Ichigo would choose Kido techniques. He would tell uh, Urahara how he's trained by Yamamoto on advanced Kido techniques like Hado number ninety-nine or Hado ninety, just Hado and the ninety. And uh, pretty much um, Tessa would come in. And he would kind of just do his own, you know, look at Ichigo, look at him with an, an observant eye. And he would see that Ichigo has a lot of potential when it comes to Kido. And pretty much, um, he thinks he can handle the hidden auto. Now, if you guys are wondering, like, what are you guys talking about? What's the hidden auto? If you read the Thousand Year Blood arc and you saw the Ichibe versus Yuha fights, I think that was maybe chapter 620, between 620 and 630. And, uh, Pretty much Ichibei used like Hidden Hado number 3, uh, Tepatsu, I think it's called. And he basically summoned a dragon that blew air into um, uh, Yuha's like zone or domain of Blood Fiend. I think it's called like uh, An Anmana. Ah, I think it's something like that. If, uh, if you guys know the name, definitely put that in the comments. And yeah, you get that imaginary cookie just like the person from last part got the imaginary cookie for saying Okiura. like we got the answer right so um, pretty much uh, Tessai would tell Ichigo to meet him in the training ground room in about one hour or uh, yeah you know let him take a breather let him you know talk to Rukia and Toshiro now 
he would ask you know Ruki and Toshiro what was happening and you know Toshiro would tell Ichigo that they can't really go back to Soul Society since number one Ichigo is now exiled just like um that guy with the hat and clogs and uh, the the guy with the weird beard and the lady with the purple hair now he's talking about like Hiroichi, Tessai, and Kisuke and uh, yeah so they would all you know pretty much know their um, negative feelings about even leaving soul society since they've rarely ever been to human world other than like going on missions they went there on a few vacations but like other than that they didn't really actually go there for anything other than missions so but they do know the terrain of the town they're in it's karakura town so um toshiro would remind them that if they uh, if you know if they were exiled maybe they should get stronger since everyone assumed that they're weak and they lost a hollow, so we can surprise them when we come back way later on. Toshiro would explain that he still has a un unmastered bond kind of sense, and Rukia says that like her Zanbakuto was willing to give her like that test so she can attain Bankai. And Ichigo says that he has to fight some hollow thing that merged with his shinigami powers so in that in you know to prepare for that he has to learn advanced keto and uh, something other than swordsmanship and they would all note that you know they'll be stronger in about maybe in the next in the coming time of course they don't know what's happening in the first place that's how i was confused how the lieutenants they could have learned bankai or any of the people who haven't learned bankai like mashiro i don't even know if she has bankai she all she does is like kick people i think she's just a hagada expert um i don't know why like hiori lisa or any of the lieutenant levels lieutenants that like i don't know why they didn't learn bankai in that time they could have easily done it since they have 100 years to do it but let's not go on a tangent let's get back to the uh, video in a sense so pretty much um we'll uh, start the training so like they'll do training like tessai and ichigo will do training for the next two to two weeks to one month and ichigo will just be learning he's either he's trying to like for the first week he tries to form a dragon with his ryatsu after that he tries to shorten his rachu he to like 20 percent and then he tries to form it from there and then he learns riatsu control so and then he learns how to expand his riatsu pools or expand more of his potential pools of riatsu so in this time he would have let's just say he would have gotten quite strong then after the third and fourth week he would have learned the keto hado number 99 and hidden hado number three and he would have made some of his own keto like he would have made like a lightning dragon a fire dragon i think that's already a thing though i'm not sure i don't think it is he would have learned all, all kind of small types of elemental keto he wouldn't have named them they're just unnamed keto uh he would have learned like hero Sen serin i think it was it was like in the zanpakuto rebellion arc it was um uh, i think it was like the the former kuchiki head uh, like the one Byakuya fought and killed, he was he was using like keto that nobody even knew. So I kind of he would learn those type of ketos as well, and he just would have became a keto master in general. Ichigo is actually gonna be not OP, but he would have been quite strong. Like he knows advanced keto, advanced swordsmanship, advanced hakuda. I don't know about him learning shunko. I don't think it's his style though. Even though keto isn't his style either, but I just wanted to try it out, like the keto part. And uh, he would have learned how to, like, due to him shortening his Ryatsu, learning how to expand it, learning how to use less, that would have helped him majorly in his Ho-Ho, or his, uh, you know, uh, Shunpo. So he, he would learn how to pro properly use Utsusemi. There was a technique I f forgot in part one. So, yeah. After all this training, uh, Ichiko's, um, like, luck would have changed dramatically his outfit would have changed because each of his emotions pretty much control the clothes he wears so he would have basically be wearing like don guy form of himself that kind of outfit since number one it's drippy number two just listen to what i had to say about number one it's drippy so um and i mean it's not too far of a fetch anyway it's just you know taking off that ribbon off his chest and just you know compressing all of your routes your riatsu into your sword and uh, your clothes 
it isn't too hard to get so uh hopefully my stuff doesn't like get too mad about it but i don't think he really cares about like something as small as clothes and uh pretty much what would happen is he would you know be meditating using the jinzen technique to go into his inner world now he would be in his inner world he would be calling for old man zangetsu he would be like old man old man zangetsu you know where are you and uh pretty much uh he, you know ichigo would turn around and he would see like the the uh, person he was fighting early he was way weaker but now he was standing there with a vasa lorde mask and the two horns with uh, his bankai in his hand but it was all bleached out and uh, he would have had like claws on his foot and his like hands like on his fingernails and his toenails like just would have been kind of like sharp nails there he would have had fur at his neck but it would it wouldn't have been like red or anything like that it would have been like a kind of a dark blue or it's like seeing dark sea and blue in a sense and you know like i said bleached out then he would uh move his mask to the side and he would say you recognize me like as a question you know he's antagonizing ichigo ichigo would quickly um uh immediately go bankai and the hollow is already bankai or zangetsu is already in bankai so he, he was he just you know ran towards ichigo they would then, you know, uh, do their clash and, you know, infusing the, um, you know, the uh, technical tech. Wait, no, their like technique that they always use to get to get tensho. He would have infused get to get tensho into their into their swords, kept it in, use it as pressure, and basically had the swing as strong as get to get. So he would have swung and, and then. You know, Zangetsu would have swung, and their clashes would have basically went, you know, started to um, go to, like go towards each other. Like maybe I don't know. I think it's converged. Yeah, they would their attacks would converge towards each other. And the thing is, what would happen is their attacks would be equal power. So if there is, for example, ten, I think ten newtons of force, and then ten newtons of other force, and they equal, that means nothing. So there's, it's equalized. I think that's what it's called Newtons. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. Then, um, you know, Zangetsu and Ichigo would be blasted back a few skyscrapers before they would start diving towards each other. Now, after this, uh, Ichigo would have then used uh, Bakudo number 61, Rikuju Kuru, but the hollow would literally catch the the light beam coming from the restraining keto and he he says like i'm not gonna fall for that again before you know ichigo says oh you know you fell for it and when zangetsu went to like split in half um you know ichigo would have used the um, portable gi guy and he would have be you know appeared behind uh, zangetsu and zangetsu would quickly uh put his finger into the chain of tensa zangetsu swinged it around and threw it behind like behind him and Pretty much, uh, Zangetsu would say, "You think I'm gonna forget your signature move and let you use it against me?" Since Zangetsu didn't go through all of his memories, he is basically Zangetsu now. So Ichigo would have uh, would have kind of coughed up blood before pretty much using Utsusemi, and he would kind of like, in a sense, the attack would never hit him in the first place. He's not reversing techniques; he's just using the technique fast enough, and then the technique looked like it hit, but it never did. He would then pretty much uh, take a deep breath and then he would try to transform all of his Ratsu into one point into a certain place in his body where he always makes Keto. It's just like every Shinigami has it. So he would have charged up all of his Ratsu to the max before he would uh, start to silently go through incantations before he would say, Hado no, Hado no Kyuji, go to your Tenmetsu. So after uh, he would recite these um, incantations and say the technique's name, which is Hado number 99, he would, you know, five dragons would appear behind him and they would be roaring and the color of the dragons, the color of these dragons would be um, blue. Now on the Versus Wiki, I, I did a little research. Apparently Hado number 99, or Uraharo is Hado number 99, is apparently 6A, which is like, no, I think it's 5A. Uh, it's not 5, five not set. I think it's 7 or 6A. It's like country level to continental, which was like pretty much like unbelievable. So, yeah, I just went off on a tangent for no reason. But uh, basically, what I'm trying to iterate here is um, 
pretty much he would use the technique and um, he would then go through some inc incantations before using Hidden Haru number 3, uh, Tepetsu. So yeah, I think I said that right. It was basically the dragon that blew away now. So a gr another green dragon would appear behind him and it would start to merge, like separate into five different dragons before merging with the Haru number 99. Now, once this would happen, all of the, you know, the uh, dragons would start blowing out air and then it would separate from the Haru number 99 and they would disappear before the Goryo Tenmetsu would like basically, um, you know, initiate its attack and, you know, kind of do like a double attack in a sense. And uh, yeah, that's something Ichigo created. It's called the combination Kido. Using Kido that are look similar and have similar effects together, creating a um, five times multiplier to the Kido. I just made that up in the last few seconds. So props on me, I guess. So once the Kido hit and pretty much it would have destroyed <laughs> Zangetsu. Zangetsu would then be seeing like a chest, like a hole through his chest and then a hole through his spleen and then through his shoulder he would have had the cuts everywhere like his body would be spurting of nothing but bleached out blood in a sense i think his blood is bleached it's like kind of like grayish like i said bleached and then um zangetsu would start laughing and uh, he would start to regenerate it now pretty much ichigo would have took a deep breath and remembered all the memories that surged through him when he first beat uh, Zangetsu. So he would have put a sword up and charged up a Sero. And it would have not been a Norso. Like, um, Ichigo unintentionally would have pretty much made a Grand Race Sero. So the blue bulb would come out from his sword before Ichigo would then charge up Getsuka and Zangetsu's eyes would widen. Ichigo has pretty much used Shinigami, his Shinigami powers and some of his hollow techniques to make a combination attack. Now, if you guys don't know, this is the Getsuka Grand Racero. So Ichigo would raise his blade up and like, the sky above them, it would pretty much make a hole. Like it would kind of make a, a wave of Ryatsu and it would go through the sky all the way to like the top of the inner world, like to the stars, I guess in a sense. And the, pretty much what would happen is this would literally change the weather. It would go from like, like sunny to then rainy to then tornadoes in the background to then like volcanoes erupting around back to day. So he would have changed the weather just by him charging up the technique. So what would happen is he would then he would then like raise his blade before rushing towards each uh, you know rushing towards Zangetsu and Zangetsu would try to swipe him. This would work, but Ichigo would pretty much turn into dust before reappearing behind him, and he was like, "You're out of here!" Before he would pretty much like split Zangetsu in half, like he's not living that technique. And pretty much Ichigo would then pretty much scream out, you know, Getsuka Grand Racero before um, um, like Ichigo would split Zangetsu in half, just like I said, using the technique. And Zangetsu's body would just, you know, like the, the chest area would say goodbye to his legs, like the Ribozo. So um, Ichigo, like that attack would have been so destructive, Ichigo would have been kicked out of his inner world. That kicked out, but. It, it was too much destruction for his uh, soul to handle, or his inner world to handle. So he would quote, like he would be um, like forced out back to out of the Jinzen technique. And when he came out, he, you know, obviously noticeable scars there, and like the uh, red, you know, unique red Ryatsu coming out of him from the Getsugas that were used against him. So after this, Ichigo then you know grab at his face and put on the mask, and this time the mask looked completely, completely different. Now this time, it would have been the mask that Ichigo had after beating Ukiura. And it's not like he's- it, the mask wasn't heavy just like it was after beating Ukiura. It was the same weight. So Ichigo would have felt a burst of power. Maybe he was calculating around maybe a 10 times the multiplier. So after he would take off the mask again, he would then uh, take a few deep breaths before uh, Uraha would come in clapping his hands. You say, it seems you subdued your hollow, but it's not as you subdued, your subdued it. It's like you like merged it to your Shinigami powers, giving it extra powers. So that Zanpakuto you seem to be holding, it's not actually your real Zanpakuto anymore. It seems we'll have to do a lot of uh, fishing, if I do say so myself. Now, this would actually not be a joke. He's gonna go fishing. 
So Urahara would bring him to this river he has underground. And they would go on a small boat and they would go in the middle. Now Ichigo would start to sense some different um, energy from there. Now this would actually be thousands of Suchis that are in the water. Now what would, what would happen is pretty much um, uh, Urahara would hand him like a... Uh, what is that thing you use to fish? I'm so stupid. Um, he would give him that. I can't even remember what's the name. Alright, he would give him it. If you guys actually know what it is, I'm, I'm pretty... I'm acting pretty dumb right now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you remember... Uh, if I remember, at least before the end of this video, I'll say it. But he would give him it, and he would start to throw his line into the water before he would start to, you know, uh, close his eyes. Like, Uruha would tell him, you know, close your eyes, search for your soul. So he would, you know, close his eyes, lower the, um, uh, what? oh my god, I wish I knew it. He would lower the line, and it would go, like, pretty deep. Like, this, it, there was no limit out how far the, um, the line would go. So, uh, pretty much what would happen is he would reach, like, it would go down a lot, but Ichigo's not focusing on that. So he's going through, and once the, the lower he goes through, the, the, he basically just sees what really happened in part one. As I explained how, like, Ichigo was born, like, right before, he basically sees everything and knows, like, what coins are and how they originated from. And the old man Zangetsu would have told him the truth about how he's actually his representation of his Quincy powers and uh yeah he would have learned about Yuha and how he's coming back in about 109 years if I'm not wrong yeah 100 and somewhere around that it's around 100 years and they have to prepare and get ready and they can't rely on their Bankai because it's going to be stolen and stuff like that you would have learned all of it and pretty much he would then look after learning that he would accept it Except that he's part hollow, part um, Shinigami, and part Quincy. And he would stop relying on his Zanpakuto and say the Zanpakuto is me before he opened his eye and the fishing, fishing, fishing net? No, it's not what it's called. I thought after I would, you know, talk about this, I would actually remember what it's, what it's called. But I can't. Get out of here. Alright, I'm, I'm talking to someone. I'm talking to fucking Siri disappeared out of nowhere. I'm just kidding, no, I'm actually not kidding, but I just say I'm kidding, I don't know why I say I'm kidding. So, after Ichigo would pretty much uh, open his eyes, out of nowhere, the um, thing I can't remember who used to fish, uh, would turn into his two new Zompak toes, which, um, like in canon, would be his two dual wheel uh, bond guys. So, uh, pretty much what would happen is... Um, he would get up and Uruhara would congratulate him about, you know, finding a way to actually, um, you know, get your Zambato since most people, they don't actually, um, you know, they don't actually pass this. They usually have to use another technique, but it's pretty good that he did learn this technique. So, not technique, but he learned how to get his Zambato in this method. So, pretty much what would happen, Ichigo would get up and... He would have pretty much just chilled for the rest of the day. Now the next morning, Urahara would have uh, told him, you know, if you're gonna stay here, I'm gonna need you to do me a favor. Uh, Urahara, you know, telling Ichigo this. Ichigo would be, you know, eternally grateful towards Urahara, and he would, uh, you know, ask him, what is it? And um, Urahara would start to explain about certain Shinigami that went rogue. And now is stealing powers from Shinigami, from substitute Shinigami that are, uh, you know, uh, I guess like a certain depth. It's substitute Shinigami. He's explaining to them it's like a deputy of a city. So let's say the substitute Shinigami comes along and starts to, uh, you know, make sure no hollows attack any souls and rightfully guide them to soul society. Let's just say uh, Ginjo comes along and steals their Shinigami powers and absorbs them with his own power. And, um, this causes, you know, this is a problem, you know, and it's a problem for me since sometimes I can't really go around so study. I'm 
I mean, not Soul Society, um, the human world or Karakuru Town, because I don't want to run into him. Like, I know I can beat him, but it's just not good for business. For, you know, Soul Society ever finds out where we are, it's just not a good idea. So, pretty much, Ichigo would nod his head and completely understand it. And, um, he, um, he would ask him, How do you want me to deal with this? And he would say, Yeah, you're going to deal with it with your uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Rukia, Mrs. Kuchiki. Uh, Miss Kuchiki and um, Toshiro, Mr. You know, Captain, the uh, Captain uh, Hitsugaya, and uh, with the uh, those um, captains and lieutenants, you thought I holified, saying you know completely carefree and as a joking matter, since Kisuke seems more like Gojo than Kakashi seems like Gojo. I'm so it's never mind. I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything. I was gonna say it, never mind, but it's just like. He's scared, bro. This guy's always joking around. Like, no lie. Bro, this guy's always laughing. Not laughing, but like, always using this tone in his voice that sounds like he's like joking around, but he's quite serious. So, Ichigo then meet up with the Vice Arts. So, he'd be walking through the, the um, let's just call it like the shipping warehouse district. Or, yeah, that's the right word. So, he would come up to this district, but this district had a barrier on it. So, he would walk up to the barrier and just rip it. And not actually like, <laughs> this is not Beyblades by the way. Uh, I actually mean like he grabbed it and ripped it. Like ripped a hole into it before he walked back in. And Hachi would be meditating before he would open his eyes. And he would say, uh, a unknown individual has entered the barrier. Now Hiyori would just get her sandal and stop getting like start getting like active. And once Ichigo would walk in, all he would see is a sandal just coming right at him, and he would get slapped right in the face. Once Ichigo would get up, there'd be a huge um sandal imprint on his face, like it's just red. And uh, Shinji would then like Hiyori was gonna throw another sandal at him, but um Shinji would then like grab a wrist and. Uh, Pretty much ask Ichigo, oh, so you're um you're from Urahara, right? And uh, you know Ichigo would kind of shake the back of his head, saying, "Yeah, I am." And they would clearly see the captain's cloak on his, um, you know, on his outfit, since Ichigo has a habit of still wearing it. He still likes it, like it's a very good outfit. I mean, jacket. So pretty much, um, Shinji would say, Who, "Who'd you steal that off?" <laughs> Ichigo would kind of back up, looking all offended. Like as a joke, he would say, "Oh, I didn't steal that off. I earned it." And uh, pretty much, uh, Lisa would close her book or her perverted book. Uh, no one really knows what she reads. I think she reads like magazines. I'm not gonna get in description of what magazines she reads, but let's just say magazines of um, art. I guess somebody would call it. So he would then, you know, she would then, you know, uh, look at each girl and. Uh, say so um, how do you become captain of the Gote 13 and uh, pretty much Ichigo would explain that he uh, he started out um, in the academy graduated in one year and he would have reached in his pocket and shown the badge for that or like a certain award for that you know passing early and they would have seen like that was legit then he says he joined the 11 squad for around maybe 10 years uh, correct me if I'm wrong about the years though and he would have fought he would have occasionally like a lot fought Kenpachi and everyone was pretty surprised at that Kenpachi there's a new Kenpachi and pretty much he would explain yeah Kenpachi of Zaraki so his name's Kenpachi Zaraki since when he was a kid he fought Unahana and he let's just say in the stories he wrecked her shit and Yachira Unahana was said to master 8,000 sword styles and that guy beat her and he had to limit himself during the fight just to beat her and all the captains and lieutenants would be quite you know flabbergasted since number one everyone is always scared of Onohana but they were still worked with her in some cases but every time she does that weird smile of hers it looks so demonic so Pretty much everyone would think that this guy was strong. He managed to beat Yatro back in her days before she became a healer. Like, that was quite surprising. So, um, uh, pretty much Ichigo to explain that he was here to um, do that mission. And, uh, yeah, um, Hachi would, you know, wave his hands forward. And he would ask Ichigo, how did you get in the barrier? 
um Ichigo explained oh uh, I see your keto user as well you're the person that made the barrier I'd suggest next time try using uh, maybe more than one barrier if someone of advanced keto level or even Quincy's can uh, extract a reishi from your barriers then it'll you know it'll go down or it would open a hole through where they can get through so I'd suggest you know merging barriers together so it's very hard so when they try to do it you would be alerted before they would actually get in and pretty much Hachi would be kind of surprised since number one Ichiko is kind of like a keto expert here but he isn't just a keto expert he's like he's balanced and everything he's like mastered everything at that point he had so many years to train for everything you know it's so surprising at that point so they would go in and uh Shinji would show him like a bullet um board of all like who Ginjo is who their uh, accomplice is like Tsukushima and all the full bringers like Yukio um like um I don't really remember their names like Jackie um, yeah I, mean, I don't really need them I mean I kind of need to know their names so yeah uh he would start, you know Shinji would start to explain what they'll be doing he says well they're pretty much gonna attack uh um, Tsukushima and Ginjo when they're alone while all the full bringers are away and can't sense them so pretty much he would show them where they're going exactly where they're going and he would have put up and they would pretty much uh, put a bait like a, a substitute Shinigami and when Ginjo and Tsukushima would be there uh, you know like Ichigo like team Vizard plus Ichigo, Rukia and Toshiro would all be there to basically um, jump and <laughs> jump them jump those two at least and he would tell Ichigo not to get stabbed by Tsukushima's sword or anyone here or his sword will um, insert himself into their memories and I did not mean don't think of it like that okay so just take a deep breath and you know don't have a dirty mind please so um, yeah so he would explain that this will be actually happening tomorrow so you have exactly one day to get ready and prepare yourself since you are seem you know pretty strong we should be able to do this quite easily then um they would you know start to get ready they would use like uh Ryasu concealing cloaks try to stay stealthy and ichigo remember all the lessons from soifan or yorichi i mean not actually directly from yorichi but like some of the lessons that are taught to the omnitskido or the shihoan clan so it would just be like a common thing that Byaka taught him since he knows Yorichi like he was taught by Yorichi so yeah now pretty much on uh, the next day all you know every one of the Vizards and and Nichigo, Rukia and Toshiro would have their cloaks on and they would have their swords you know sheathed and they would head out now pretty much um Shinji would be having the these goggles similar to the one that Renji had that stretched for Yatsu and sense it. So they were they pretty much uh, put in um, Ginjo's and Tsukushima's Ryatsu so they can specifically just sense them. Now, pretty much what would happen is uh, they would see you know they would sense him and they would go and flash step onto the lights post and anywhere that they couldn't be seen. Now Ichigo would be looking at Gimjo and he would sense his Ryatsu. He has a special type of power, almost as if. And then he would search really closely. He would, he would see that for some reason Ginjo has the fragment of some divine power. Now, if you guys don't know, Fullbringers have a fragment of the Soul King. So he would have seen, and he would have seen this is way more powerful than Yamamoto himself. This divine power. This was actually, like I said, the piece of the Rayo or the Soul King. And he would see that Tsukushima has it as well. So uh, Shinji would then activate his Shikai, and he would, you know, uh, Ichigo and Rukia and Toshiro would run at them. Now Ichigo would quickly use his Bakudo number 61 on both of them, and Ginjo would look behind him, but it was actually in front of him. And then what would happen is Toshiro would awaken, like, use his Bankai really quick, and then he would, uh, um, he would then use Hirosembi, compress it into his sword, and stab right through. Um, Tsukushima's chest. This would cause like a hole through his chest, and when he took it out, Tsukushima would literally be dying. Now Ginjo, Ginjo would be pretty mad. He would summon his sword, and but he couldn't move. It would, it would turn back into Reishi. After this, Ichigo would then walk up to him, grab his face, 
before taking back all of the, the Ryatsu of the people he stole it from and some full bringer Ryatsu which will come in clutch later on if you don't know what I mean guys so after this Ichigo's uh, for some reason like he didn't mean to actually like take it he just wanted to take it from Ginjo so what happened is Ichigo's um, form would start uh, you know changing and he would have those full bring marks that he has in canon so after this, he would get his dual wield blades, and he would use a Getsuga Jujisho to basically um, eliminate Genjo. Now after this, uh, the team would come together, and they would kind of do like a team hand <laughs> handshake. Now actually, they just dab each other up. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know if they actually do that, but if they did, sure, why not? It's your imagination. So um, pretty much, you would head out and you know. Ishigo, Rukia, and Toshiro would start to form friendships with the Vaisarts. And, you know, this will, this will just be the beginning. Now, for now, guys, this will be the end of this what if or end of this part, part four. And, by the way, we'll be doing a time skip right before the end of around, I'd say, a good 25 years. That's pretty good. And we'll start to see the new generation of, like, Bleach. So, my plan is for like what bleach is supposed to be is oreo would kind of be like that not the mc of like this what if but like mc of what ichigo was in that timeline he would be like the mc of that timeline in a sense like the mc of that generation if you get my vibe so and pretty much yeah let's just say um ichigo will be teaching oreo some nice techniques if you get my vibe so yeah all right so we uh, resume this what if after pretty much Ichigo um, goes through like a 25 year time skip. Like, that's a long time skip, but compared to us at least. But to them, it's basically nothing. So one day Ichigo would wake up and he would walk in, um, you know, you know, wake up. So if I didn't tell you guys, uh, he kind of lives in the um, the Vizard's like hideout in a sense. So we'd wake up. And he would just go straight to the Urahara Shoten after doing his necessaries. Necess necessaries? I think I said that right. And once he would pretty much get there, he would you know, knock on the door and Urahara would open. And he would go inside and Urahara, just like always, or I think it's Tessai or Uru, I don't know how to pronounce her name. But like the little girl would give her, uh, give him some tea. Alright, uh, for you uh, lowly lovers in the comments, just shut the fuck up please. Uh, <laughs> I don't mean like that. So, <laughs> um, Urahara and Ichigo would be sitting there, and Urahara would be like, you know, you know that you're part Quincy, right? Ichigo would be like, yeah, I know, and, you know, he would ask, do you want to meet the people who are Quincy's as well? And, by the way, guys, this is like when Uryu is like nine years old, so, yeah, somewhere around that time, and, you know, Ichigo would be thinking in his head, you know, maybe they're like the Kuchiki clan. I, he, he remembers from all the time he was growing up, the Kusha clan were like quite stuck up, like even Byakuya at some point, but he realizes just how, you know, honorary system works in social society, so he, he wouldn't really give it much, you know, much attention. So, pretty much what would happen next is uh, Ichigo would agree, and, you know, Warhara would give him the address to the, like, um, uh, Ishida clan place, like the clan uh, home. So he would, you know, head over there and he would knock on the door when he would, you know, um, pretty much, uh, uh, Ryuken's dad or, like, Uryu's, uh, grandpa. I actually don't know his name, though. Like, I, I, I forgot his name since he, uh, he doesn't live much. Like, he's not really shown much in the episodes. But he would answer the door and he would see Ichigo and he would, you know, Ichigo would introduce himself, Ichigo Kurosaki. And, um, pretty much, um, he would ask, you know, are you a Quincy? And, um... Ichigo response, yeah, in some way I am, and pretty much, um, you know, his, like, Uryu's grandpa would let him, you know, walk in, and he would pretty much meet up, you know, walk in, and you would see, you know, Rook and, uh, sitting there, I don't know, just on a couch or chair, and pretty much, um, Rook and would say, so, um, you know, who are you, since, uh, your soul ribbon's a little weird, since there's, you know, three soul pressures coming from you. Like, how does that work? And Ichigo would like scratch the back of his head and he'd say, oh, well, I'm like part Shinigami, part Hollow, and part uh, Quincy. You know, before you, you know, get out your bows and arrows or your um, your sword, <laughs> you 
probably want to let me explain. So he would sit down and um, he would start to explain his story, how he was like born and all, and how his his mom was going to his dad is a Shinigami and he somehow got a hollow in him some way and that it even emerged with his Shinigami powers. So yeah, it was just a long story. And pretty much the like um the Quincy's in the world of living would still know who Masaki is, but like it wouldn't be that that year like it would have been way earlier so only like Uryu's uncle not uncle uh, like grandpa or great grandpa would have known of her uh, before she went to soul society and but the other uh, Kurosaki said like live in there with in peace obviously so pretty much um Ichigo would like be introduced to everyone and he you know he uh, meets um uh Uryu and he'd walk in and um He'd ask uh, Uryu's like grandpa or grandfather, um, you know, how progresses Uryu with his Quincy techniques, and pretty much uh, he would, you know, say that he can form the bow and arrow and he knows basic Quincy techniques. So he would, you know, um, walk up to Uryu and you know, do like the hand motion for like follow me, and then he would, you know, they would go to the training ground. Uh, and I feel wonder why did like Ichigo just walk in and be like, I'm gonna train you, Uryu. Um, he just sees potential in him like Ichigo has with all his you know just Ichigo his eyes in general can see potential it's just kind of a thing you get when you're strong like Goku or Whis or Beerus can see potential so can Ichigo so pretty much uh, they would you know rock through the corridor and head over to the training ground when um, he would um, tell uh, Uryu uh, the power systems of Quincy they have the Volsta again they have the Shrift so pretty much uh, he would tell Uryu that he should probably find a way to unlock his shrift since if he were to unlock his shrift he'd be probably you know like the Volstagen gives you a 10 times multiplier but the shrift gives you another 10 times multiplier so that would be a 20 times multiplier and Uryu would be quite shocked since he did the math and this was actually right and you know uh, what would happen is Ichigo would uh, form a sword out of you know just Quincy Raishi this would just be the usual Tensa Zangetsu blade, since Tensa Zangetsu is fused by the old man or a younger version of Tensa Zangetsu, who is the uh, incarnation of Yuhaba. So technically, he would still have that same sword. So he would form the sword, uh, and it would it would kind of look like his full bring Tensa Zangetsu, which I mean, not too problem. It's drippy. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, pretty much, um, yeah, he just get ready to fight, and out of nowhere, he would swing at Uryu, and Uryu would narrowly dodge before um he would then like it, it would kind of like cut his cheek and pretty much uh he would you know the f funny thing happened is like some like blue like tint of blue would cover the wound and after a few seconds it would close so um you know or you would recognize this as blood vein and uh he should go and say you know in his head you know say good you know it seems this one uh, you know reacts and evolves in the middle of the you know in the midst of in the midst of battle so he would then swing his sword again and constantly swing at it and Uryu for the next maybe three hours would have to constantly dodge until he would constantly get annoyed of it. So he would make a, out of nowhere, just out of instinct, he would make his Zealous Knight, Zealous Knight here, Blade? It's, I think that's like a German, I, I may be wrong though. He would make the Zealous Knight here just out of instinct like I said and he would swing it at Ichigo and a huge like blue wave of Ryatsu would escape. Not like a Getsuka, just like, you know. Uh, wave pressure in general and Ichigo would then use like a Bakudo number 81 Danku and pretty much it would blow up in Uryu's face so Uryu would be sent back flying and the blood fiend would react constantly uh, to, trying to you know protect Uryu since that's literally him, his Quincy powers it is like Yuha it's like soul as in you know, Uryu so Uryu would constantly like keep evolving keep uh, healing his wounds and keep um, you know multiplying his attacks until about like maybe around sunset when Uryu would just out of nowhere his limits would have been like he would have hit his limits and he would have uh you know I guess went unconscious due to the um uh the like the longest bar he had with Ichigo and Ichigo was like he had that killer intent so like Uryu was at some point scared then he got his resolve and he was scared like it was a lot of uh chances where Ichigo I mean not Ichigo Uryu was just scared and resolved I guess so Pretty much what would happen is after this he would you know pick up Uryo and then take him back to the um, Ishida household yeah that's what it's called and uh, he would you know Uryo would sleep for the like rest of the day and Ichigo would go hollow hunting so he would you know 
he would have just slashed down a hollow in like the fields or like the mountain area of Karakuru town when uh, a certain someone would pretty much appear behind him. Now this someone would have been uh, none other than Askin Neklavar. Now if you guys are wondering why him out of all the people, number one if if Ichigo were to like his plan, like Ichigo did not just do nothing for 25 years. Like Toshiro and Rukia, they mastered their Bankai. Ichigo uh, got his own Bankai, and um, he didn't really get his full power though. Like what I'm trying to do is Ichigo's Bankai will like be in a certain ability. Is in a fight, Ichigo would constantly evolve, and this evolution would be spiked by 10 every time he would evolve. So at each time he would evolve, the multiplier would you know. But multiply by 10 constantly until he was stronger or, or still like equal to his opponents. It was like the Hokyoku with the evolution process, but on hacks. Uh, I mean, not a hacks, but like on steroids. So, um, Askin would appear like behind Ichigo and he would try to throw a poison ball at him uh, since that's his power, death stealing. And Ichigo would use, you know, Donku before like a, a like an invisible or transparent shield would appear behind or between the poison ball and ichigo and the poison ball would in you know come in you know, contact with it and it would uh, like stick onto the wall before it would just start to you know melt it and so the wall would you know crack into tiny little pieces of pur purplish glass due to the poison's effect so what would happen next is um, Ichigo would then, you know, summon his two Zanpakuto, his dual wield Bankais, before putting them sideways or like um, diagonal to each other, before doing a Getsuga Juju show. And there would be like a cross beam of light would escape from his blade and would go right towards Asken. Now Asken would get hit by the te technique and he would just use his death stealing to make a, uh, I guess, like a antidote to his attack. And so, since, um, Nec Askin Neklavar has uh, immunity to energy attacks, but he would still get injured by it, so he would heal himself using uh, Bullet Veen, and Ichigo would be kind of annoyed at this. So he would then, uh, you know, raise his sword towards, um, you know, uh, Askin before merging his swords together, making his uh, Shikai just stronger. Now, in the manga, this is literally called Bankai, but in my opinion, I don't think Ichigo actually used his Bankai. So Ichigo would put his swords together and go to split, you know, Askin in half, and this would actually happen. Like, since, uh, <laughs> I would say, in my opinion, Ichigo's, like, uh, multipliers would have probably put him about maybe 10,000 times the speed of light. This is me exaggerating, but he is really fat, like, massively faster than light. He would then, like, um, kind of a speed blitz um, Askin before splitting him in half. Now, after this, Ichigo would then walk away, you know, since he knows Askin easily survived that technique. And um, Askin would obviously survive, and he would go back to Yuha, and he would report to him. Now, Ichigo would go back to his, um, you know, uh, the uh, Vizard hideout, and once he would walk in, he would obviously be greeted with uh, a sandal to the face by none other than Hiyori. Now, Hiyori's just annoying like that. I mean, I, I'm kind of confused why she acts like that, but it is what it is. So Ichigo would then have like a fit about it, and you know, he would have that imprint on his face, just like every time he got hit by that sandal. Uh, obviously, <laughs> he didn't really actually get hurt. It's just like a comedic moment. It's not like he actually uses iron skin to, you know, protect his face. Definitely, of course not. He would definitely never do that. So, uh, pretty much what would happen next is, um, he should go to walk in and he would just maybe sleep for the rest. Not maybe, he will. And the next day, he would ever to, you know, head over to Urahara shop and he would just, um, you know, start talking with Urahara and Tessai about their plan to basically, um, use a certain keto they made or they're making to uh, um, close all the shadows that uh, all the Quincy's used to watch on Soul Society so they won't be able to like have as much versatility and they'll be expected so uh, you know, out of nowhere a huge um, like a beam of light would appear from the floor of you know Urahara Shoten they were kind of in the desert area so what would happen is like a huge pillar like, I guess, yeah, that was right. A pillar would appear from the sky and would just fall down, causing a crater to form in the ground. And when the smoke disappeared and doors opened, uh, it would be none other than Squad Zero. Now this would be like Ichibe, Tikafune, um, Senjumaru, Oetsu, and um, I think I got everyone. It's Ichibe, Oetsu, Tikafune, Senjumaru, and Kurinji. So they would all walk out and 
pretty much Kisuke would not really be on guard since he knows it's the squad zero and he knows who, who like Hikafune is. Tensei would, you know, act the same and Ichigo, you know, he's, I mean, he's kind of cocky so he probably thinks like he's stronger than squad zero. He didn't even know who they were since Soul, like not really anyone knows much about Soul Society. I mean, the Squad Zero other than like the Kiraku or Ikotaka, any of the only like the old gen uh, captains would know. So he would walk in and Ichibei would come up and he would say, oh, are you Ichigo Kurosaki? You know, come with us. And um, Ichigo would look towards Urahara and he says, you know, are you coming? And pretty much they would have their small little conversation. And uh, Squad Zero would explain to them that they're the... You know they protect us the soul king and the soul king is the, the being that holds all the universes together and holds the cosmology from falling apart now once urahara and ichigo would walk in uh like their um pillar that they use to go back uh he, you know they would be told to basically hold on and ichigo would just put ryatsu into his feet and hands and he would put a grip onto the wall and on the floor of that pillar before they would be you know shot back up to the uh soul palace now, once everybody could pretty much get up to the Soul Palace, um, you know, Ichibei would start to show them around until um, what would happen is uh, Ichibei would say that the, the Soul King wants to talk to him in a sense, even though the Soul King doesn't really exist, but exists at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. So after Ichigo and Orohara would eat some of Hikafune's like food, which replenished all of the Ryatsu, I think that's the point of it, which is why she was like appointed to Squad Zero, you know? Uh, so they would, you know, get launched over uh, into Kirinji to get in one of their tubs, like the, his hot tubs. And he, he, surprisingly, Ichigo did not really need any of his protection. So did Urahara, since Urahara got the idea of the hot tub from Kirinji from when he was a kid. He actually, he, um, Kukaku, Tessai, um, and Yoruichi visited the, uh, the, um, Soul Palace when they were kids, and pretty much using Kukaku's cannon, they pretty much went up there, but it was forbidden. So pretty much Ichibei like took the oaken from her, which is why she doesn't have her arm anymore. So yeah, uh, that's just the consequences, I guess. But hey, the good thing is Ichigo uh, is now there, and he's gonna get stronger hopefully. So yeah, it is what it is. By the way, that part I mentioned about Urahara learning about the. Uh, uh, Kirinji's baths. I just made that up. Like, <laughs> I, I just it's a pretty good theory though. So, uh, Ichigo would then walk into like the main palace. It was just it's just clearly shown to be like in the middle. And once he would walk in, he would feel this strong presence in like the middle room. So he'd walk in, and Ichibe would be there to, uh, you know, welcome him. But Ichibe would tell him that he can't really go in into the same room as the the Rayu, since uh, the Rayu only specifically asked for him. So, pretty much what would happen is he would walk in, and once he would walk in, he would look at the Rayu, and the thing is, the Rayu was just a piece of flesh. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I think, I don't know if Sticks actually is going to show that panel of the Soul King. If he is, that'd be Pog, but basically, it's like his chest, that's it. He has his head, his chest, and then that's it. <laughs> there's no legs, there's no arms, just that. And he's literally into this, like, golden uh, stone. And you, this will look very familiar to the Hokyoku, since the Hokyoku is like, or that it's something like that. That's where our Urahara got the idea to make the Hokyoku from that stone, since that stone keeps him like, you know, the linchpin. So what would happen is um, he would look at the Soul King's eyes, and immediately as soon as he looked at it, he just for some reason passed out. Now this was done on purpose. But you know what the Ryu is trying to do, or what he isn't trying to do, it's hard to explain since he exists and doesn't exist at the same time. So pretty much what would happen is Ichigo would be sent into the Soul King's inner world, and pretty much he would wake up and he would see like the Soul King. But this time he had a full body. He was literally like the Prime Soul King. Just think of that, or search it up. It, it looks like that. So would get up and he would you know get on his knees and start bow you know into a bowing position and each you know the soul king would you know tell ichigo to get up he has no reason to bow you know this is, it's just not really necessary so uh pretty much what would happen is once uh ichigo would get up he would just you know shake hands with the um the, the soul king and um you know the soul king you know would introduce himself as the rayu or the soul king he doesn't really have a name and he would start to tell Ichigo about his uh, his uh, son, or pseudo version of a son, Yuha, 
and he would tell you um, each go out about you ha and how you know why he's even doing this and Basically, Yu Yu is probably mad that number not mad. He just doesn't like how the world is. He he doesn't like the concept of death. You know, uh, have you heard the story in the uh, the academy? How you were told that uh, you know to keep the balance, you were to cleanse hollows and bring them over to Soul Society, and to keep that balance, you would have to do that. Well, Yu Ha did not like this system, and he went against me. So I sealed him into that of a baby. So pretty much somehow, um, when people touch him. They gain extraordinary power from him. they gain a piece of his soul since he is like my son obviously he has a lot of power so uh he pretty much formed a uh empire based on people he gave a piece of the soul to and that means he has they have like strips and bull stickings just like you were trying to teach uryu uh yesterday so uh pretty much uh, he would ask uh, the soul king does he have access to what you all has or what he does and pretty much uh, the soul king would explain to him what the almighty is and that you how will probably come one day and to absorb him and to, he would become the soul king so that means he would get access to the almighty so pretty much what would happen is the prime soul king would explain not the prime i would just say soul king he would explain that he, he wants ichigo to become like the representative of soul society since he wants ichigo to lead the five great noble clans and hopefully you know he sees how the rukanka is and he sees why aizen is even you know starting his rebellion against him to kill him and become soul king and uh, he pretty much wants ichigo to be there and to prove you know like number one he wants ichigo to like eliminate central 46 then he wants ichigo to like you know keep watch over soul society and uh you know he can do that while being like the head of all the five clans and this is pretty big power like you're at the head of all the five clans including the unknown clan and i always thought maybe aizen was from the unknown clan so yeah all right i had to do something there for a second so pretty much i left off for like uh, Soul King was like explaining to you know Ichigo um, he, that he wants Ichigo to basically be the head of all the five noble clans, and pretty much this includes the clan that I mean, Aizen's from. Now this clan does not actually have a name; it was never given a name since all the other clans they had a name. But the ancestor of Aizen, this one was quite the you know the strong one. He was the strongest one, especially when he was like right before he was sealed, and the five you know the ancestors were fighting him. And, you know, he had the hardest time fighting Aizen's, you know, ancestor. So, and also Ichigo's ancestor, but that's probably why he's here there. So, Ichigo would, you know, obviously he wouldn't decline this offer. It's like, you know, an offer from the Soul King to, like, the deity in that verse, I guess you can say. So, he would, uh, you know, uh, he would be given, like, a, um, uh, a Hayori. Now, this Hayori has the Oaken in it, and pretty much Ichigo will like have the oaken placed in him so he'll be like a squad zero member but in soul society in a sense so he'll become like a squad zero but not officially so pretty much each go would walk out and he would head back to the world of the living now once he would pretty much get there uh he'd he'd, he'd be told that uh pretty much once he would get there uruhara would be there with like a grim look and uh pretty much um each go would be told that uh, Rukia was uh, taken like by Soul Society to be uh, executed uh, for treason, and for some reason they targeted just her, not just Toshiro, who is also treason, or the Vizards. And pretty much Urahara knew this since he did since the same. He did put the Hokyoku in Rukia just like in canon. So yeah, <laughs> Aizen probably wanted the Hokyoku. So Urahara explained to Ichigo exactly this. And he wants you to go to go back to Soul Society. You know, you can save Rukia, and I can get my Hokuku back. It's a win-win, right? So, uh, pretty much, Ichigo would be quite mad, like straight up. Like this guy, just like once he heard this, like his soul, like his Ryatsu, like straight up exploded. It didn't actually like destroy anything, but let's just say Ichigo had to really start punching some mountains in Urahara's uh, basements from how like mad he was. So pretty much what happened in Ichigo um, would pretty much formulate his uh, Rukia saving operation. <laughs> so it would be him. It would be then you know be Shinji. It would then be uh, Yorichi, and then that's it. It literally was just three people. Actually, yeah, yeah. Actually, 
I'm gonna have Orohara come along. I'm literally, <laughs> if you, I'm literally just making this as as I go on. So the four man team would be Orohara, Ichigo, Yorichi, and Shinji. Since Shinji is the strongest of the Vizards, he can now use his mask way fluently. His Hollow has greatly evolved with the help of uh, Urahara's Hokyoku. So pretty much, yeah, Shinji would have gotten a massive boost. Shinji would obviously, you know, he would still know his Shikai and Bankai. He would be quite strong. And this time, he realizes he shouldn't actually tell people what a Shikai does. And he should, you know, shut the fuck up. <laughs> now, pretty much they would head over to Soul Society. And what would happen is uh, they would go through the Senkai mode, but this time it would be that same gate as in canon because if they go through the Senkai mode, the Ryatsu has been tracked. You know, if they even step one foot in there, there'll, there'll be uh, like officers, like boat captains will be on their way there. Like this, that's just how much of an emergency it was. So they would, you know, go in there and once they would get in, they would pretty much um, run to like Kakaku, Kukaku's place. Well, my pronunciation, that sounded mad sus. So they would head over to Kakaku's, Shiba's house, and once they would pretty much get there, uh, they would, you know, recuperate, not recuperate, I mean, they almost literally got killed by the Don, not the Don guy, but the, um, the cleaner. Like, Ichigo is really, like, stopping himself from literally slapping the, slapping the shit out of that Don guy. So, pretty much, they would head over to Kakaku's house and, via flashback, and once they would get there, uh, Kukaku would obviously welcome in, like, your Richie's there, Shinji's there, Urahara's there, like, so, uh, pretty much, they would, they, they don't even have to learn how to do the cannon, like, they would go, maybe the next day, so the next day, uh, pretty much everyone, like, I'll start slowing down, I'm kind of going a little bit fast to get there, so everyone would pretty much wake up, Ichigo would put on his, like, um, he, he, um his, uh, Hayori, and this Hayori would be a specific one, now, in all the years, there's been a story about a, a man, like a Shinigami, who was suspicious, like specifically gifted by the Ryu. And he, you know, what signified him from other people is he had a certain Hayori that was marked with a certain kanji that everyone knew of the Soul King. It had the letter of the Soul King, like a Ryu. It had the kanji for that. So when anyone would see this, they would know that you know, he basically saw the Soul King. You know, Soul King basically trained him in a sense, which is not entirely true, but it is in some way. Now, Ichigo would put on his uh, his Hayori and uh, his outfit, like his um, usual fighting outfit, the same one he has from like the Thousand Year Blood War arc, um, the one that Sinjumaru made for him, which has the Oaken in it, and then he would put the Hayori over that. Now, they would then get ready, you know, pretty much uh, Urahara and the others using the Ryatsu concealing cloaks, with Ichigo like being able, like the clothes uh, has like a mode where you can go into stealth mode, and basically it, it conceals your Ryatsu. Now, you know, Ichigo and the you know, rest of his friends, I guess, <laughs> Urahara is basically his friend now, I guess. And they would head into the cannon, and you know, that would be completely calm. Like, Yorichi has been in this cannon so many times. Like, it's just like clockwork for her and Shinji and Urahara. And Ichigo would walk in, he would take a few deep breaths, but this is nothing like how the he was taken to Soul Palace, so he's definitely ready. Now, once, um, you know, the cannon would be shot off. Yeah, where we left off was Ichigo, uh, Shinji, Yorichi, and Kisuke were pretty much shot off using the cannon to Soul Society. So yeah, uh, we're gonna roll that intro. Now we resume this one in um, when the cannon is shooting. Now this time, due to all their perfect or almost perfect Ryatsu control or Reishi control, I honestly don't know the difference. But I think Reishi is used by Quincy and Hollow. It's just it's like a simplest form of the spiritual energy, and the energy is just more advanced. So yeah, that's why maybe mainly only Shinigami use it. Now, uh, the cannon will be shot off, and this time they'll be they'll, they'll be able to get way further, and they'll be able to get detected way less. Like there would be still like a huge explosion, but people won't really think like it's an invasion or anything. So when they went to go investigate, nobody was there. So Ichigo, uh, hot and, uh, hat and clogs, uh, Yoruichi, obviously in cat form, and Shinji would be running through the uh, Soul Society or the Seireite, and they would make it to the cave. Now, pretty much from now, um, Yoruichi would uh, go around getting intel on what's happening uh, with Rukia's execution. 
if it turns out Rukia's execution was still like a bait for Ichigo to come along and so they can get that higher um it's just so they can you know they're not just killing Ichigo I mean sorry they're not just killing Rukia they, they get Ichigo possibly other uh, rogue um Shinigami as well so um pretty much for the next maybe two weeks they would just do nothing but training and I'll be getting into that so Ichigo and his Zanpakuto, Zangetsu, will just be training. And they'll kind of do like a similar test to that of the Bankai or the fake Bankai test. So Ichigo would then be seen, uh, you know, clashing back and forth with completely different Zanpakuto, trying to find his inner self and hopefully train more and more to get stronger and stronger. So basically what would be happening is the old man would be training his Quincy techniques and Zangetsu would then be training his Shinigami and Hollow techniques. So like, they're kind of, it's like a 2v1, but technically it's just like a, he should go fighting himself in a sense. Um, so they'd be clashing, uh, you know, uh, canceling out with Saros or, uh, you know, seeing which blood fiend will last out against each other or any, uh, let's see if the hell, hell thug fill. I don't know what the simple arrow of the Quincy arrow is called. Or like whose Quincy arrow would hit each other or whose Volstagen would last longer. Honestly, I didn't really give Ichigo Volstagen. I just thought I just thought maybe I should just have it be a multiplier. Uh, maybe his Volstagen is like his fake Bonkai. That'd be interesting. And his like um what's what's the no no his shrift would be the uh, fake Bonkai but his Volstagen would be like his Shikai and all, which he'll always be in. So yeah. Now we'll do that time skip two weeks. Um, Shinji, Hiroichi, Ichigo, and uh, Kisuke, uh, they would all be ready and they would, you know, head out to their separate location. Ichigo would go to uh, Ichigo and um, Shinji would go over to the um, Sokyoku, while Hiroichi and Kisuke would go confront Aizen at Central 46. So. Yeah, if you're wondering why doesn't Yuruichi go fight Sh Soifan, I mean, she's kind of gonna do that and then meet up Kisuke is just like, she's pretty much gonna be Soifan pretty fast, so that's why she, that's why I said like, uh, she's going along with Kisuke. So, uh, Ichigo and Shinji would be sitting down and, they're, you know, going over plans and, uh, Yuruichi would hand them the same, uh, um, Shihoen cloak would have the, the clan symbol, which, uh, Shinji and Ichigo would wear, but Ichigo is definitely feeling the cloaks, you know. He has first the clothes from Senjumaru, then he has the Hayori from the Ryu, which he would not wear since he actually wants to fight people. He didn't. He doesn't want people to just notice him and then not fight him. He, he wants to throw hands with the head captain or any elder captains as much as he can. So, um, yeah. Now, uh, once Ichigo and Shinji would pretty much get to the Sokyoku, they then see the Sokyoku bird going down to, uh, you know, conclude its execution. And Ichigo would pretty much Shunpo slash here, uh, here, I don't know the flash up for Quincy's, but the Quincy flash up and Sanido kind of a mixed technique. And he would appear in front of the Sokyoku before just palming it. Now using his Quincy in kind of semi-hollow side, he would use their like absorption before he would absorb it into like reishi or pure reishi before he would then throw it towards the sky causing a huge explosion to erupt almost like clearing the sky so like this like it would kind of be a little like the clouds would then be like dispersed. It was, it was sunny with a few clouds but <laughs> after that it was just sunny. Now Ichigo would land on the stand. And he would say, Rukia, how'd you get caught, you know? Aren't you like Captain Class? And uh, pretty much, uh, he wouldn't, you know, he would not even like let her answer the question before he says, well, that doesn't matter, we're here anyway, right? So he would then uh, grab the, uh, the bandages of Zangetsu, the two of them, and then start spinning them around or with both of his hands before he would then uh, kind of use a Getsuka and then he would pretty much split the stand into the tiny little pieces. After this he would then uh, grab Rukia and throw her just like he did in canon but instead of Renji it would be you know Shinji. Shinji would then use his Shikai to alter everyone's senses and uh, Shinji would get out of there. Now I uh, Kisuke would you know be keeping Aizen busy 
uh, uh, Kiske and Yurich would be keeping Aizen busy at the central 46, but Aizen would, uh, you know, Gein would use that same keto technique that would teleport them away. I wish I actually knew the name. If anyone knows the name, kindly tell me in the comments, you know, with a few exclamation points and you fucking fake bleach fan. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But basically, um, yeah. Uh, each go would then start um, would feel a presence behind him, a familiar presence, someone, some presence he knew for like a lot of years. He would then turn around and quickly clash with said person. This would be none other than Byakia. Now we all know Byakia and Ichigo's relationship, and this would be kind of like the. I I think in um, there was this anime. I can't remember which anime, but basically the MC is called like Thorfinn. And he, when, like, I saw an anime moment where, like, he had to fight his dad. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a weird time. I, I wish I knew the name. Who knows? Steak will probably put it up on the screen. I remember I was watching part one, and I was talking about, like, Gratify's part. And it, I, all I see is the thumbnail just, you know, put on there, on like, cropped. I was like, damn, Steak. That was <laughs> legend for that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean... I'm not kidding about that. Never mind. So, um, back to the topic. Uh, Ichigo and Byakuya would clash, and their Ryatsu's, um, like, blue and pink would pretty much clash together, showing the symbolic differences. Now, Ichigo would then back up before, he, uh, you know, slicing down his sword, like, um, swinging it down, causing a blue arc, which we all know is Getsuga, but he didn't really say want to say the name because that makes it like ten times more powerful. You know, he didn't want to take off his head. You know, I mean, if he did that, he would just obliterate his body. But Byakuya would then use a, try to use a Bakudo number eighty-one, uh, which is like a shield or Donku. That's what it's called, and like it would kind of uh, it would still shatter the Donku. But it would pretty much lower the damage that he would actually got if he took it head on. So, and pretty much he would have used his Shikai to enforce the shield a little bit. So he wouldn't have taken much damage. He would then pretty much um, call his sword back and it would reform into his hands. For he would say, I cannot really, you know, um, hold back on you, uh, Kurosaki. For he would then open his, um, like, you know, move his hands up before he would drop his blade. Well, Ichigo this time would not be surprised on why he dropped his blade. He would then say, it is what it is. <laughs> Before, uh, he would then, um, you know, output his Ryatsu. He's not really going to use Bankai. That, that'd be a little too OP. So, Byakuya would activate his Bankai. Bankai Senbon Sakura Kagiyoshi. And about 10 blades would form on each side before they would all turn into pink flower petals. Now Ichigo, uh, remember all the times he would fight Byakuya, he would constantly do the same move over and over. He would pretty much go so fast, he would you know, completely slice each flower petal. But when he would go to do that, for some reason, um, like the flower petals, they just weren't there. It was They were there originally, but for some reason, Byakuya learned an ability where he could completely like recall them faster than Ichigo could swing his blade because Byakuya was just so used to Ichigo constantly beating him, even though he was in Bankai. Before, um, Byakuya would then try to use his Goten. Go Goke? Goke, yeah, that's Goke. He would then form a circle around Ichigo trying to you know, suffocate him with his flower petals. But Ichigo would then output his Ryatsu and it would cause like a, a circular um, to form on the ground before it would go all the way to the sky. I don't know what you call this, like a, a beam, like kind of like the uh, negation that the uh, the Gillians used to help uh, Aizen escape. Now, Ichigo would then, you know, take a few de uh, you know deep breaths before he would then think of five dragons appearing in his mind. Before he would then say, Hadonu Kyuji, Goryo Tenmetsu. Now, five dragons, like the ground would start to erupt, and five blue dragons would start to appear, both, all of them releasing a huge roar from its uh, imaginary mouth, even though it's still there. And don't even think about it, it's November. Now, um, all the five dragons would go rushing towards Byakuya, and Byakuya, as some last ditch effort, would then summon all of his petals to, yet again, try to lower the damage he's definitely gonna intake. So he would then um, fix all of the Sakura petals into one point. 
he would then uh send the soccer pedals in near like the neck of the dragons and the dragons would you know move around and they would go to clash with said soccer pedals as the soccer pedals would form into that of a dragon almost like a dragon going for a dragon symbolic little moments there before the dragons would clash and uh there'd be a huge explosion of blue rariatsu and you know pink flower petals now once the dust would clear or the and the petals would clear we would see uh the akia uh, against a wall bloodied and uh, you know he would then drop his sword uh and you know almost as if he was admitting he lost ichigo would then look around and he would see that shunsui and ukitake were fighting old man yama uh, Soifan was taken down by Yuroichi, and now Aizen was like approaching him from. He can sense it, so he would then try to sense Urahara's Riatsu, and he'd see that he was momentarily taken down, and he can see that he's trying to come over there. Now, what would happen is Aizen would come over there, and you know, number one, he was trying to take down Ichigo. Ichigo is a massive. Um, obstacle in his plans number one he first he needs yeah, Aizen knows about Yuha that's why he's been trying to get stronger and that's why he magically disappeared it's because he knows Yuha is coming back and he wants to deal with it fast so yeah that's why he wants the Hokyoku now uh pretty much um Aizen would then walk up to Ichigo and he would unsheath his sword going to uh you know use his Shikai Kyokosu Getsu uh, he would try to do Kudakure Kyokosui before his voice would be interrupted. Ichigo would then start to disappear. For some reason, this Ichigo would um, use a hidden Hado number three. Uh, damn, I can't, can't believe it. I literally just remembered it. No, I can't remember it. Um, but he would have basically switched places with a piece of his clothing. So he would have switched places with what, one of the scarves he had from the Kuchiki clan. And he would then appear behind Aizen and swing his blade at him. And Aizen would kind of uh, react in time, but the suit, you know, it would have been too heavy for him. And Aizen's sword would have had a crack in it. Before I, uh, you know, due to Aizen's shock, that would have leave him open for attack. And Ichigo would grab him by the face before diving forward and sending him into the plane of the field, kind of like you know, in the mountain ranges. Now, once Aizen would, you know, um, like be thrown by his face uh, into the mountain ranges, Ichigo would then be there, you know, ready to throw some hands. Now Aizen would take off his glasses and shatter them because they were just like a, um, a fashion statement before he would then, uh, you, know, you know, pull his hair back and face it into the right position. And he would unsheathe, it, unsheathe or, you know, fix what's remaining of his sword by putting Ryatsu into it before he would start to unleash more of his potential. Then, um, he would reach in his pocket and he would have taken out an, like a, the Hokyoku he made. He still has the Hokyoku he made and he would start to infuse it into himself. Uh, it would have been perfect still, but he would still be able to go through the ascensions. Now, uh, he would infuse it into himself and uh, they would start to fight. Now, Ichigo would then uh, use his Getsuga Jujutsu show and a huge cross beam of light would escape and it would go right for Aizen. Aizen would try to use his Ryatsu to completely uh, like make a Bakudo number 81, which would be way stronger than Byakuya's, which got destroyed by a Getsuga. So uh, this would have completely blocked the technique, but this is what Ichigo wanted. He wanted Aizen to be uh, distracted by his Getsuga. Now he would flash that behind Aizen and he'd say, you're too slow. Before he would then, um, you know, he would say, you know, uh, osoi, uh, like kind of like how um, Urahara said, or, or basically Aizen said to Urahara in their fight. So Ichigo would say osoi before he would then slash his back, his, you know, the back, his uh, more stomach or back area. And, uh, you know, Aizen would be quite shocked before uh, a, you know, a white foam would start to cover his whole body. And this would show like the Hokyoku starting to understand Aizen's thoughts and his heart's desires since that's the point of the device it takes the user's desires and see if they have the potential to reach that desire and then it would give it to them now aizen would then uh, start to go into his uh butterfly his cocoon form and uh he and ichigo would just start clashing for what seemed like days 
Now, for, it would have been like hours, but they would just continuously start clashing. Aizen would have reached his own ascension, going into his butterfly state, and Ichigo would have just uh, realized he had to use it. I mean, if he didn't hold back, now Ichi, you know, Aizen would keep evolving. He needs to destroy Aizen, so he would then pretty much um, put his swords together as he would activate his Bankai Tensazan Getsu. Now he would then uh, appear behind Aizen, and due to Aizen's shock of Bankai himself, uh, Ichigo managed to use his Getsuga Tensho with his Bankai, kind of like he did to Yuha before he would then, uh, like the shell would start to break as he would split Aizen in half. Now after this, to put insult to injury, he would then use um, Haro number 96, Ito Kaso, to basically burn his body from there. And then he would then walk up to Aizen, and then absorb eyes and soul so this includes the hokyoku but he wouldn't really have the hokyoku he would have just had the power that eyes and received from the hokyoku so yeah that would have just been way too op if eyes had i mean if ichigo had the hokyoku then uh the part of ichigo's soul that was sacrificed in him using Haro number 96 would be restored with eyes and soul and he would uh you know walk away as eyes body would disintegrate into reishi he would then uh, uh, kind of grow taller as he went through his own evolution and his hair would kind of become longer, similar to that of Butterfly Aizen. And uh, yeah, he would have went back to Soul Society where Yamamoto wouldn't have been hostile towards him. And uh, pretty much, <clears throat> Soul Society would have been back to its original state. Ichigo would then be given back his captain's position with uh, Toshiro coming back and being lieutenant. Shinji would come back and be the fifth captain, while Urahara would be hat and clogs. But he would still live in the world of the living, just like Yoruichi and all the others. Now, um, the, the people who are captains now, like uh, Love and Rose, I think, Rose? Yeah, they would, become, they would come back and be captains. So any uh, captains you saw after the full Brink arc, they would be captains, including like Kensei and Mashiro would be like lieutenant just basically anyone now um pretty much we'll do a time skip for about three years now uh ichigo would tell yamamoto of uh ya um you uh, you know incoming and this would cause yamamoto not to lose his arm number one from using kata number 96 and uh number two uh he would train more now i mean he's literally so strong you can't really train a bankai since he would drown all soul society so pretty much what Urahara would do with the help of Mayuri they would pretty much make a separate domain or dimension where Gamamoto and any strong high tier character can train to their heart's content it would have been uh, like the size of the Gargantua infinite or maybe like Mukin and Ichigo or anyone else would just spar and they would pretty much start getting stronger and stronger unlocking more of their Bankai's abilities or just unlocking their Bankai. So anyone that didn't unlock their Bankai can now unlock their Bankai or even evolve their Bankai. So everyone at this point would be receiving training and it would have been way better. Now we'll be going to the day of the events of chapter, I think it's 501. Now this will be the invasion of none other than Yuhaba. Now um, in this time they sealed off all the shadows so uh, basically Yuha can't watch them and uh, that would have been for the better. Now uh, pretty much what would happen next is um, Yuha would invade even though for three years he didn't actually have any knowledge about you know what's going on soul society he still would continue with his plans. He needs to, uh, he needs to absorb the soul king and he needs to do it fast. Now, um, once he would get there, the huge army would be waiting for him, with the front lines being Ichigo, Uruhara, Yamamoto, Shunsui, and none other than Shinji Haraku. Now, everyone would be waiting there, just, you know, um, waiting for Yuha to throw the first punch or sword just be a swing. And Yuha would start to, you know, manifest his sword as a Jukram and all of the loyal, um, the, his royal guards like Lele Baro, Nijerad, uh, um, Askin Neklavar. Who am I missing? I think I got everyone there. I know there's one other person, but I just really can't remember. 
and all the Stern Raiders would come along. Along with Gerard, of course, and Grammy and everyone, because they knew uh, they couldn't really catch Soul Society off guard this time. They, like, um, for some reason, somehow, uh, they knew they were coming. So, they needs to go, uh, go big or go home, if you get the, uh, the reference. Now, um, pretty much, uh, they would, you know, start to run into battle. Uh, Ichigo would quickly run through, grab two Stern Riders' face, you know, um, smash them together before he would then throw them back into the armies, and they would probably take about 10 Stern Riders with them because each gun fused his Ryatsu kind of into his throwing strength, and it would have been way more, uh, more of a hitter. Now, Ichigo would then use his Getsuga, and this would completely like maybe take meh. 5% of the army and uh, pretty much what would happen next is Shinji would then um, tell everyone to basically you know back away from the battle and pretty much what would happen is they would back away into like this um, I guess you could say shield uh, the shield protected anything no Ryatsu based attacks could come through Shinji would then uh, you know start to get into a meditative pose as he would use his Bankai to basically um, he hit like him versus everyone and pretty much what would happen is the Leila Baro would start fighting Askin and Grammy would start imagining that everyone like all the Stern Riders hearts would stop and uh yeah the only one not affected by this was obviously Yuha and uh yeah and I think Gerard if I didn't mention anything about Gerard then he's not affected just Stern Rider the Royal Guards then uh, Shinji would then, you know, come in using kind of a Shikai ability, and he would come slicing and dicing, and uh, yeah, it would have just been Gerard and Yuha after the slaughter. Then uh, Ichigo and Yamamoto would come in, and Yamamoto would activate his Bankai, and uh, this would, um, you know, this would cause all of Soul Society to start to drought up due to the heat of Yamamoto's Bankai. Now Ichigo would then, um, you know, start to whisper a few incantations before he would then use um, Hado number 54. Uh, I can't really remember its name, but it's a fire-based keto. And I swear, I for some reason when I did this series, I seem to forget every keto I memorized. But then, pretty much after Ichigo would fire the keto blast, um, yeah, that's what it's called. It's called high end. Then uh, Ichigo would then use. Um, another fire based keto which is a little bit bigger like a fireball jutsu in a sense and then he would then use Hado number 96 Ito Kaso since he can regenerate part of his soul even though high speed regeneration comes from the soul so he can regenerate what comes from the soul which is a bit of a tangent but Ichigo would be able to heal his soul then um, Yamamoto would then send you know uh, use all of his tips uh, like put all of the fire to the tip of his blade uh, you know that's being 15 million degrees hot and he would then uh, kind of uh, charge up a you know fire blast and this would kind of coincide with the Haro number 96 and the Haro number 54 causing an explosion of just fire next Yamamoto would then resurrect ashes from the dead as Ichigo would then use a Getsuga to just show to distract Yuha as all the ashes would then pretty much jump on Yuha suffocating him in his ashes and they would pretty much burn him alive after this you um ichigo would then appear by yuha and start to whisper a few incantations of an unknown keto after this red bars of light would start appearing on yuha as he would suddenly be sealed uh but for some reason this was the clone of yuha if you guys don't know there was uh, a, uh, a stern raider who could clone himself and this was the clone of yuha obviously now, a few minutes later, not even a few minutes, a few seconds later, the real Yuha would start and he would say, that was an interesting battle, but I won't be losing to that this time. Now, he would then, um, uh, you know, summon his Quincy sword as he would appear by, uh, you know, Yamamoto as he would split him in half, killing him the same way he did in canon. And uh, Ichigo would kind of, you know, receive some emotional power due to number one, Yamamoto's death. You know, he's been serving him for years, so it's not like he just doesn't like Yamamoto. He's probably one of the, he's the best head captain ever. Now, Ichigo would then use his Bankai Tensas on Getsu and pretty much um, 
from the backgrounds like Uruhara would come in and he would start using Binding Kido along with other captains who basically uh, put all their Ryatsu into Uruhara. So Uruhara would use all of his Binding Kidos like 61, 62, 63, 79 and um, you know, he would bind uh, Yuha in you know in the keto so while Yuha's busy you know trying to get out the keto Ichigo would be there with his Bankai and he would go and split Yuha in half now Yuha is not in his Soul King version so Yuha is just gonna die immediately from that attack now after um, Ichigo would take down Yuha uh, he would then you know finish all the remainders uh, remain remain all the remnants I think the word is of um, Yuha's army completely eradicating everyone and bringing temporary peace to soul society now after the fight and all uh, Ichigo um, just like I said in the other parts um, he would be brought up by the uh, soul king himself the soul king would explain that um, Ichigo would kind of become like the central 46 in a sense like that he won't actually be sitting in meetings and stuff like that he's like the representative of all of soul society he's like the head of soul society above the head captain but below squad zero but that means he's above central 46 he's like the head so anything that happens he sees it it's kind of hard to say this he's like the satrap of um, if you guys know what satrap is it means like governor he's like the governor of soul society if you get my vibe now, pretty much Ichigo would be named uh, the head of the Kuchi clan, and Byakuya would uh, obviously, you know, lay down his um, hairpins and his scarf, as he would, you know, stop being the head of the clan, but he would still carry some of the respect, though. He would continue his duty as the captain of Squad 6, while Ichigo would kind of become, you know, the honor of Soul Society. So, yeah, that'll be the end of ichigo's royal journey uh i hope you really liked this series and uh yeah i know i did you know, it really got me creative and all like i couldn't really think of anything else so yeah without further ado guys um have a good day and yeah we hope you all did enjoy this movie slash all parts type of situation and yeah i would once again like to thank unbound for doing all that and i would also like to give a shout out to our channel members who help the channel sustain itself and so on and so forth. So without further ado, this is Mini Boy 6 and Unbound. Peace. One, two, three, let's go. Subscribe for more. Yada yada does it.